Chapter 651 Electromagnetic Rifle and Pills When Byzeman's body stepped through the open doors of the first silver pagoda, he immediately felt as if he was stepping through some kind of invisible membrane. Although it was only one step, the unspeakable feeling made him feel slightly uncomfortable for a mere fraction of a second before that feeling of discomfort disappeared without a trace. However, Byzeman did not expect to encounter something so miraculous when he stepped into the pagoda so when he finally saw what lay beyond that strange darkness that even the sun's rays could not pierce he stood there frozen. His reaction was by no means special since Shang Bing Shua and Chen he also froze when they entered the building moments after him. The same happened to Sun Ling, Xiaoya, Wu Yijuan, Huang Tian, Liang Jing, Tinghua, and all the others who entered the pagoda not long after. Soon, the situation had grown to the point that if not for the door being especially wide many might have stayed outside as those in front did not advance and blocked the way to the inside. Awesome! By Zeman's memory was still clear when it came to the inner appearance of this pagoda even though it had been a few years since the time he visited it together with his family back then. However, what was in front of him was definitely in any way not similar to what he had stored in his memories. What's this all about? Where are we? No, but. Look, the square is right behind. How is this possible? Such a magical place. Everyone immediately began muttering words under their breath as they stared at the huge room before them that was easily the size of two soccer stadiums with a capacity of 100,000 people each. Furthermore, the most incredible thing was that when they looked up they all saw a ceiling over their heads which made no sense whatsoever since in theory, they should be looking at a huge circular staircase that would lead them to the rest of the pagoda's floors. This place was actually built by a rather talented rune master I have to say, Lilith spoke in a voice that only by Zeman and Shangguan Bing Shui could hear. She surveyed the surroundings casually and commented nonchalantly, even though I know practically nothing about runes. I can say that the person who drew these magic circles really knew what they were doing. She pointed to one of the two huge magic circles inside the room, on which they were all standing, and noted, if I'm not mistaken, this magic circle must act as a teleporter. I bet that when the pagoda received the required energy of 2,000 unclassified soul stones through the two bronze statues, this magic circle would immediately activate once the test is passed so that when the victor walks through the pagoda's door he or she would be taken to the treasure. Ironically or not, just as in the novels, many powerful existences like to leave their legacies or any kind of mark that proved they once existed in the world before they died. Lilith had known some fourth-order existences that after reaching the limit of their lives or suffering mortal incurable wounds decided to create their own mausoleums where they would leave part of their wealth along with trials waiting to be discovered and surpassed by some lucky soul evolver. Of course, if one did not have the necessary strength, then one would definitely die like a dog. Taking the previous case as the most recent example, if not for the fact that in this group there were monster-level existences such as Bai Zemin, Shang Bing Shui, Chen He, and a few more, then all the other humans would have been slaughtered, even an army of 500,000 armed men would have been destroyed by the mechanical golems. Shang Bing Shui and I will go in the front, the rest stay behind with Nan Gong Lingxin and Huang Tian as the second line. Bai Zemin took a deep breath and began to walk slowly and cautiously, being closely followed by the rest of the human troops. Seeing how cautious he was being, Lilith didn't know whether to laugh or cry. Although she was actually happy that he was not being overconfident, his caution was too high. Bai Zemin did not allow anyone to touch anything inside the room and even he pulled back at the urge to grab one of those weird-looking strange weapons lying on the floor next to the 20,000, plus gunner golems that had now been reduced to nothing more than a pile of scrap metal. It was only after walking around aimlessly for more than five minutes and making sure that at least in the immediate vicinity there were no hidden movie-like mechanisms when Baizemin finally waved his hand for everyone to relax. Too cautious. Shang Guanbing Shui muttered to herself as she looked at him with bitter eyes. M? Baizemin looked at her and said with a raised eyebrow, Did you say something? It's nothing. Shang Guanbing Shui withdrew her eyes and even whistled childishly. Humph. Bai Zemin snorted before bending down to pick up one of the weapons from the ground. Shang Bing Shui also picked one up and soon each of the leaders of each guild or deputy leaders picked up one of the futuristic-looking weapons. He didn't know it, and Shang Bing Shui didn't know it either, but actually that short exchange drew a lot of attention, mostly due to her ever-cold expression finally melting away and demonstrating such a gentle and playful personality that contrasted greatly with her usual indifferent and cold self. The gun was approximately 100 centimeters long and weighed about 5 kilos which made it a relatively heavy weapon considering it was shaped like a rifle with the most notable difference being the barrel. 
The barrel of the gun was actually two metal arms that extended along the gun in a straight line, making up in total more than 60% of the total length of the weapon. In addition, the barrel had what looked like several bright red metal plates joining the two arms. Overall, the weapon looked quite powerful despite its peculiar structure. Soon, the weapon's records flashed in the eyes of Bizemin. Electromagnetic rifle, long-range weapon, rank, 1, physical attack power, 75, magical attack power, 3,500, remaining energy, 2240 soul megacyclone, durability, 2,548-3,000. Options, 1, the wielder of the weapon can switch between rapid fire and single shot mode at will. 2, it recovers durability by expending some of its stored energy. 3, it has a maximum range of 10,000 meters without diminishing its power at all. Description, first generation weaponry that possesses enough power to evaporate an entire lake in a matter of minutes. If an experienced unevolved shooter carries it, they can easily claim the life of first order existences and even hurt second order existences slightly. It consumes energy contained within soul stones to operate. What? This sucker has over 3000 magic attack power. It looks like a weapon out of a sci-fi movie not only in appearance but also in actual capability. Holy crap. It can even hit a target 10 kilometers away without losing power. Ha 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 ha. Our snipers will definitely have fun with these toys. The people who picked up an electromagnetic rifle immediately began to discuss with voices of amazement about the high power of the weapon but also for the rest of its capabilities including its peculiar appearance. However, unlike most of them, Bizemin was amazed by something else while looking at the weapon. Yes, he was shocked by the high power that the electromagnetic rifle had. Yes, he was amazed by its ability to self-repair. Yes, he was astonished by its high range. However, Bizemin was more surprised by the fact that the weapon in his hands was not a treasure by any means and had actually been built by human hands. Such a thing. Such a thing simply did not make sense in the eyes and common sense of Bizemin. If this electromagnetic rifle was in a top-secret military base or something similar then he could understand it. However, this was in a ruin left behind from who knows how many years ago. Didn't that mean that in the past the technology of mankind or whatever had lived on Earth had far surpassed the technology of the current era? Magical circles, ancient ruins, futuristic weapons, a soul stone in a place it shouldn't be. It all pointed to one thing and when Bizemin looked at Shangguan Bingxue he noticed how her blue eyes were trembling as she looked at him in shock. Bizemin took a deep breath and gestured to her that this was not the place or time to freeze or stay talking about anything, causing her to nod even without coming out of the shock she was feeling. All soldiers and soul evolvers should pick up an electromagnetic rifle as a primary or secondary weapon depending on your combat style. Also, except for the tents and military tactical equipment, I want everyone to leave anything else you are carrying including the firearms you brought. Bizemin ordered in a deep voice and immediately everyone started to work. Each of them carried a military tactical bag large enough to store more than 10 missile launchers so the number of electromagnetic rifles that could be stored in each bag was more than 50 once all. The weapons and food in reserve were brought out. Shangguan Bing Shui made an ice wagon and stored the food inside but did not bother with the weapons. Bizemin's spatial storage ring was already practically full to the brim at this point. He had stored over 30,000 rank 1 thin swords and had hundreds of thousands of soul stones that while small in size, with their numbers definitely didn't take up little space, therefore, he could only store around 5,000 electromagnetic rifles before stopping as he needed more space for whatever they found inside this huge room. Although there were around 20,000 rifle golems all of them had been destroyed, and in the process, more than 3,000 electromagnetic rifles were lost and turned into scrap metal after being hit by some magical skill. Still, Shangguan Bing Shui left nothing behind and each piece was stored inside a different part of the ice wagon she had built, she even kept some of the destroyed gun golems for future study. Bizemin and the others were incredibly excited once the electromagnetic rifles were stored. The attack and defense power of mankind would increase tremendously thanks to these weapons so everyone's safety had increased a great deal. Moreover, given enough time, the electromagnetic rifles could be studied and later replicated. Even if the power of the replicas did not reach that of the original, it would definitely be a mass-produced weapon that would change the fate of the entire race. Soon, Bizemin and his team were on the move once again. Although the room was undoubtedly huge, there were several areas separated from the rest and in the areas visible to the naked eye there was nothing so the group's first objective was to go into one of those separate areas and the one closest to them. Walking down the huge white corridor and while observing the walls covered with magic circles, they soon arrived at the first separation. Ugh! What's that smell? 
Chin He immediately held his nose and frowned. In fact, everyone had a look of disgust on their faces as soon as they turned the corner of the room. Bai Zemin and Shang Wan Bing Shui were the only two who were fine and whose expressions did not change. After all, the two of them had bathed in the blood of tens of thousands and even hundreds of thousands of enemies in Oblon world so any bad smell had no way to compare to the smell of exposed flesh and blood forming mountains and rivers. Crystal vases? Sun Ling frowned as she looked towards one of the three racks in front of them. Along the length and width of the three walls inside the room were three racks several meters long. On top of each of them were crystal vases and if one were to count each vase one would definitely reach the number of a few thousand. By Zemin motioned to be careful and moved forward to reach for one of the nearest vases located to his right. The vase was simple, except that there was a small magic circle drawn on the lid covering its interior. Looking inside the vase, Bai Zemin finally realized what these things were and couldn't help but get tremendously excited as he looked at the thousands of vases inside the room. All these vases have pills in them? The smell inside the room was an extremely strong medicinal odor and the mixture of so many smells together staying locked in this place for countless years naturally reached a level of stagnation. That few things could surpass it. Wouldn't it be good to find some divine pill that would increase overall strength? His troops would become stronger just by consuming them and his entire journey would become much smoother. Chapter 652 Meng Chi's Ambition Second Silver Pagoda Bai Zemin's joy did not last long when after reaching into the crystal vase with the intention of taking out one of the more than 100 shiny pills inside, his expression changed as soon as one of his fingers touched the first pill. As if it were an illusion or a soap bubble, the milky white pill immediately broke out at the slightest touch. The medicinal smell immediately mixed with the rancid smell of something that had been rotten for a long time and like a chain reaction all the other pills that until a second ago looked imperfect. Condition turned into a pile of black dirt inside the vase. This. What the hell is this all about? Bai Zemin was astonished as he looked at the vase in his hands in wonder. Big brother, let me see the cover of the vase for a moment. Meng Chi walked over as she noticed what had just happened and upon receiving the lid from a startled Bai Zemin began to look attentively at the magic circle. Bai Zemin did not stop to wait for Meng Chi's verdict as in his heart he had a clear answer but was unwilling to accept it. He quickly picked up another vase and after removing its lid tried to take one of the pills inside, only to meet the same event as before for the second time. Damn it. Bai Zemin threw the vase to the ground, breaking it into pieces as he said through gritted teeth, don't tell me all these things are time expired. Shang Guan Bing Shui and the others did not sit still either as they immediately started to open the vases with the intention of checking the pills inside. However, by the time a couple of minutes had passed and after they had opened the more than 5,000 vases inside the large room all they could rescue from them were five pills. All the others turned into a pile of foul-smelling black powder. Big brother, even though I can't draw runes since I don't understand how the process works. I actually understand a bit of their functions after looking at these engravings Meng Chi approached by Zemin again and showed him the small magic circle drawn with what seemed to be some kind of green ink on the top of the lid that covered the first crystal vase. This magic circle actually seems to be a preservation magic circle. I believe that in theory, the pills inside the vase should have lasted a minimum of around 50,000 years, but unfortunately, the power inside the magic circle came to an end after not receiving any more support from any soul stones so eventually, the pills inside lost their effect. The pills from before were actually nothing more than an illusion that was barely maintained thanks to the fact that nothing inside this place had changed or moved. Meng Chi's words clarified what most had actually noticed. The pills were naturally made from all kinds of medicinal herbs, and like all consumables, they had a certain time limit before they would expire if the necessary preservation care was not applied. After so many years of being buried in some unknown and unmaintained place, it was a fact that the medicinal pills would turn into a pile of unusable waste. It's okay. Look on the bright side, at least we were able to get these five pills and this is only the first room. Wui Juan approached by Zemin and gently caressed his arm as she saw his depressed expression. Don't worry, I'm just a little disappointed and that's all. Bai Zemin shook his head and sighed. If only we could have obtained all these pills we could probably drive all the other enemy races out of China in way less time than it would normally take. Shang Guan Bing Shui also sighed but she seemed more optimistic as she said softly, there's no need to be too disappointed. If in the past someone could make these pills, then we can make them too. We just need to study more about the mutant plants and blood of evolved creatures. As time goes on we can have our own supply of pills to support us in combat. I guess so. Bai Zemin nodded before looking at the five pills in his hand. Antitoxin pill, it can suppress any poison coming from a third order skill or lower. Refining pill, 
cleans 10% of lower quality soul power and refines it into high quality soul power. Only works on existences below level 40. Bone reinforcing pill, increases the hardness of your bones by 50% for 120 seconds. Only works on those who have not yet exceeded level 90. Godly beauty pill, increases the natural beauty of the one who consumes it by an extra 5%. Only works on existences below second order level 90. Purifying pill, clears impurities from any liquid source below rank 4. By Zemin read aloud the records of each of the five pills in his hands for all to hear and as he finished he couldn't help but have some of that disappointment he felt a moment ago disappear. It was worth mentioning that not a few greedy eyes fell on the godly beauty pill as the women listened to its effect. The only one unaffected was Shangguan Bing Shui who did not care too much about her external beauty unlike the vast majority of women. Those pills are already so amazing even though most of their past effect was lost due to the passage of time. I wonder how good they must have been in their prime. Nan Gong Lingxin said with a sigh. These five pills alone were actually tremendously valuable and except for the godly beauty pill which in Bai Zemin's eyes was meaningless. The other four were pills that at the right time and place could save lives and make many things easier. Besides, if he gave these pills to a good team and gave them time they might be able to replicate the effects to some extent. For example, before Bai Zemin had given what was left of the health potion he got in Oblon World when he finished off the second order giant eagle that had severely wounded Shangguan Bing Shui to a team composed of biologists, chemists, and developers of new vials. While it had not yet been possible to study the potion in depth, it was true that they had identified more than 50 mutant plants among which 19 had already been found so they would probably be able to develop a lower version within a few months at most. The same applied to these pills. He would definitely not waste them unless he really had no choice as Baizemin preferred to hand them over for study. After storing the five pills in one of the vases, Baizemin had someone pick up the lids where the written magic circles to take with them. What do you want those lids for? Of course, we will study those magic circles and when we figure out how to activate them we can reuse them or maybe recreate them. It will make our lives easier in the future as well. That was his answer to Sun Ling's question, who immediately became enlightened and couldn't help but praise by Zemin in her heart for not letting go of the slightest opportunity that came his way. Moreover, it was thanks to these small deeds that Sun Ling finally began to understand a bit of the reason why the young man her daughter loved was so strong. It was not only about bravery and decisiveness, it was also about knowing how to seize the slightest of opportunities that life put in his path. The group led by Bai Zemin inspected the rest of the rooms but apart from pills, there was nothing else in the place. Of course, because this place was too old and the pills had been neglected for too many years, 99.9% .9 of the pills inside the ruins were useless and the ones that still survived had lost a lot of their effect. Still, the result was undoubtedly a good harvest. With over 200 pills whose effects were variable stored in small bottles and separated by their effective use, Baizemin and the others walked toward the magic teleportation circle to leave the first silver pagoda. Mengchi, what are you doing? He asked as they were about to leave. I'm trying to draw what I can about the magic circles. Mengchi said as she scribbled something in her book without looking ahead and avoiding stumbling thanks to Little Snow who was guiding her. This teleportation circle is of interest to me. Big brother, if you want to rule in this new world you will certainly need more than brute strength and leadership ability. Mengchi wanted her brother to grow into the most brilliant existence of all as he had the ability to lead mankind into a new era of glory and prosperity. No one was better than him to do it, was what she believed from the bottom of her heart. Therefore, she wanted to support him in every way possible and it was clear to Meng Qi that the power of runes and magic circles would undoubtedly be a crucial factor. Unlike the vast majority, Meng Qi knew that while Bai Zemin looked calm on the surface his heart was pumping lava instead of blood. She did not believe that he wanted to stop after ruling China. And if Bai Zemin wanted to rule the earth, he would then have to face powers that would probably have already established themselves to some extent in different countries. Meng Qi had her own ambitions as well. It was just that contrary to the ambitions of most people who felt the benefits of evolution, her greatest ambition was to take the person who deserved it the most and who she trusted would do a great job straight to the top of the world. She had seen her brother suffer a lot and she had also seen him sacrifice himself for her. The least she could do for him was to try to help him get the best in every aspect of life. Ruling China could be considered easy since they all started out the same from a certain point of view. However, ruling other countries would not be easy at all since those countries would surely have great powers and mighty warriors who like Baizemin would have used the time since the beginning of the evolution apocalypse to establish themselves as ruling lords. Baizemin knew that his little sister wanted to help him so he patted her head gently and thanked her with a loving smile. 
But what he didn't know was that she had not only seen into his heart but was already stepping forward and preparing the groundwork for his future move of large-scale conquest. At the end of the day, there was no way Byzemin would let another great power rise up on earth. This would mean that in the future whether distant or immediate a greedy character could point their sword in the direction of his home. Such a thing was something that Byzemin would not let happen no matter what. Byzemin and the others waited 30 minutes to give Meng Chi time to draw the runes that she could read and understand how they worked before finally walking towards the large magic teleportation circle. When they passed beyond the teleportation circle, they magically appeared outside the silver pagoda from before. I really can't help but be surprised even though I knew what would happen. Kai Jingyi shook her head as she looked towards the inside of the pagoda which was a completely normal world unlike that alien room from before. We too will reach this level someday. Bai Zemin stated confidently. However, he corrected himself as soon as he said those words, no, we will achieve even greater feats than this. His words were not just empty words and for some reason when the others heard him his words sounded like a natural fact that would definitely happen in the future. Moreover, as crazy as it seemed to them, they felt that this future might be sooner than they thought. Shang Guanbing Shui watched his back and could not help but shake her head as she recalled how three months ago she practically detested every time Bai Zemin talked big or acted with that confident attitude. Now, far from detesting that kind of attitude from him, she admitted in her heart that it was attractive as she understood the kind of person Bai Zemin was, a man who always kept his word no matter what. Soon, the group stood in front of the second silver tower, the one located on the right side of the stone square. The pagoda was identical to the previous one, therefore, the two bronze lion statues could not possibly not be present. Chapter 653 The Best Duo, Opening the Second Pagoda Sunling's Thoughts 10,000 Soul Stones Bai Zemin smiled bitterly as he saw the number written on the bottom and practically hidden on the chin of the bronze lion statue. He slowly stood up and couldn't help but point out, two statues, 10,000 each. That's 20,000 soul stones. Holy hell! Even if it's unclassified soul stones such a huge number is enough to power up a troop of soul evolvers and allow them to take practically all of their skills to new heights. We have no choice. Shang Guanbing Shui forced a smile and shook her head as she looked at him with hidden bitterness, besides, something is telling me that each time the number of soul stones will be higher and higher, or worse yet, there is a possibility that the last pagodas will only be opened with first order soul stones. It could even be worse. Don't even mention it. Bai Zemin also forced a smile before sighing, but in fact, you're right. If we want to get to the bottom of all this the only option we have is to keep moving forward. Besides, it wasn't as if the price they were paying wasn't worth it. While it was risky to open the ancient ruins since none of them had any idea what would come out of there, the 2,000 worth of unclassified soul stones that Bai Zemin used earlier to open the first of the five silver pagodas was definitely returned and with interest. After all, from the first pagoda Bai Zemin managed to obtain more than 200 pills with different effects, Meng Chi managed to obtain some knowledge and information about runes and magic circles. Overall, it was a good harvest even though it could have been better if not for the fact that practically all the medicinal pills had expired. One by one, the unclassified soul stones flew from Bai Zemin's spatial storage ring, a treasure that by this point was no longer a secret to those present, but despite being curious, no one asked anything out loud. At the end of the day, asking about the secrets of a soul evolver was considered disrespectful and only the top ranks of the base had information about each one of them, this was a small price to pay in exchange for obtaining countless benefits, and if they had no bad thoughts, there was no need to fear anyway. Approximately 10 minutes later and with Chin He's help, Bai Zemin had finished feeding the bronze lions with a total of 20,000 soul stones, 10,000 each. Flash! Flash! This time no one was surprised when another 2 out of 10 th of the stone square acquired that characteristic pale blue glow that grew from the lines that made up magic runes and finally composed the huge magic circle. In a matter of seconds, the lower half of the stone square was illuminated, the lower left side glowed with a faint green glow while the glow of the lower right side was pale blue. Stand back. By Zemin shouted aloud as the giant doors of the second silver pagoda began to slowly open, revealing not to his surprise glowing terrifying red eyes amidst the deep darkness that cloaked the pagoda. Those capable of erecting defensive barriers do it immediately. Mages and archers behind, front lines set up a perimeter circle. It took no more than five seconds for the different orders from Byzemin to be completed. In front of the group, various barriers of all kinds had been erected, some used earthen pikes to act as cover, others activated the skill Mighty Gale to weaken any incoming attacks, and so on. However, in contrast to the previous pagoda, 
this time there were no beams of energy flying toward them as the doors noisily hit the walls of the pagoda after fully opening. Instead, what greeted the group were melee mechanical golems. However, these melee mechanical golems were distinctly different from the golems they had faced before. They were all around two meters tall, their silver-colored skins glistened in the sunlight and their red eyes contrasted with the metal that covered them. But what was most striking was undoubtedly the jet-black plate armor that each of these mechanical golems wore, as well as the different styles of weapons they carried in their hands which, under the glare of the sun's rays, shone with cold and deadly radiance with every step they took. In fact, seeing the extremely oppressive appearances of the golems coming out of the pagoda in an orderly fashion just like a good army the expressions on the faces of many of those present turned, ugly. They look way stronger than the golems from before. Shang Guanbing Shui voiced her concern as the first of the golems broke out with surprising speed towards them. Bai Zemin did not respond and instead advanced to meet face to face with the mechanical golem leading the charge. The eyes of the mechanical golem blazed with a demonic glow and it artlessly raised its giant sword before slashing downwards with the intention of tearing its enemy in two since its setup was simple, to eliminate the invaders. Bai Zemin sneered in his heart and with a fluid movement of his body his image seemed to flash and before anyone knew it he was right on top of the mechanical golem's head. Bang! The head of the mechanical golem exploded as Bai Zemin's leg struck like a whip and metals flew everywhere in disorder. Some metal parts turned into shrapnel as they flew towards the charging mechanical golem's steps behind and struck their bodies, only bouncing off the plate armor they wore or causing small lacerations on their arms and head. First order! Bai Zemin shouted before launching himself into the midst of the seemingly endless enemy horde. Explosions echoed in the middle of the day, joining the roars and explosions resulting from internal fighting within the many nearby forests. The entire plaza shook with every blow Bai Zemin delivered and were it not for the fact that the stone from which the square had been built seemed to be anything but normal and were it not for the defensive runes of the giant magic circle, the place would have already been destroyed and the pagodas collapsed. All those below level 25, stand back. Sun Ling ordered using her privilege as second in command before dashing forward and joining in the destruction of enemies. In contrast to Bai Zemin's deadly and brutish movements that served to crush the enemy with raw strength and overwhelming speed, Sun Ling made use of her high agility and flexibility to snake through hundreds of enemies. The two silver daggers in her hands sparked in the middle of the day and the toughest enemy could not withstand more than two slashes before losing its head or becoming useless metal after being cut in two from the waist. Soon, the mages whose level had not broken beyond level 25 began to activate skills and launch elemental attacks of all kinds. While their attacks were not too effective against these enemies due to the difference in equipment and power, they did serve to obstruct their movements and by at least a fraction of an extra second for the others. All the mages and archers were led by Chen He, Feng Hong, Feng Tian Wu, and of course, Wu Yijuan, whose skills served to hold off dozens of first-order golems without letting them move a single step forward. As for people like Liang Jing, Tinghua, Xiaoya, Kai Jingyi, Zhong De, they all rushed forward with resolve, following in the footsteps of Shang Guanbing Shui, who even before joining the fray had already destroyed over 60 First Order golems after creating five ice swords that not only flew across the battlefield as if they had a mind of their own and shattered the mechanical golems, but also released constant frost that slowed down enemy movements tremendously. A single First Order existence was no longer a big problem for mankind unlike a month or two ago. However, five of them could lead a small village to its doom while a dozen First Order existences could threaten the integrity of an establishment of over a thousand survivors. One hundred First Order existences could easily become a small headache for a large establishment with considerable military strength. On the other hand, a thousand First Order existences were enough to force all the most powerful Chinese Renaissance existences to step forward if they did not want to suffer heavy losses. However, after destroying more than 20,000 mechanical golems whose power was comparable to that of a First Order existence, the group under Bai Zemin still continued to fight against the seemingly endless wave coming out from inside the pagoda. Sun Ling's face was pale after fighting for 30 minutes. She was not exhausted despite taking out over 500 enemies by herself and in fact, while it was true that her stamina was being consumed rapidly due to the constant movements and danger she faced, her pale face was for another reason. 20,000 First Order enemies. She muttered in persistent panic. 20,000 First Order existences were enough to corner to the point of being able to critically wound initial Second Order existences. If these 20,000 mechanical golems that had been wiped out so far but whose numbers were rapidly rising with each passing second were to attack the Chinese Renaissance base, Sun Ling shuddered as she realized that most of them would probably die horrible deaths under the blade of the enemy weapons. 
On the other hand, when she looked towards the center right in front of the door where more than 80% of the mechanical golems converged, Sun Ling could not help but sigh in relief at the same time as her heart felt a lot lighter. Bang, 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 bang. From the center where thousands seemed to pile up, constant explosions shook the earth and occasional bright flashes of golden light shone under the sunlight. Each explosion resulted in the destruction of at least half a hundred mechanical golems, but the flashes of golden light were even worse as each one seemed to be enough to wipe out over a thousand enemies in an instant. Sun Ling could occasionally see the figure of Baizemin for a split second before his silhouette disappeared after being covered by thousands of enemies, but he would soon be revealed once again as, with overwhelming might he crushed them all in an instant. Sun Ling looked to her right and saw Shangguan Bing Shui raise a wall of ice to save just in time the life of a First Order Soul Evolver who had almost been decapitated by the sword of one of the golems. Surprisingly, Shangguan Bing Shui not only saved the life of that Soul Evolver but at the same time prevented the heart of another Soul Evolver from being pierced by the glowing spear of another golem and at the same time as she saved lives she contained the movements of the golems that tried to reach the rear or simply destroyed them with different ice creations. Those two. What a terrifying team. Sun Ling couldn't stop her movements from pausing as her eyes flashed weirdly looking at Shangguan Bing Shui and Bai Zemin. Bai Zemin's clearly overwhelming power allowed him to wipe out huge waves of enemies with a single blow, there was no fighting at all only unilateral annihilation. On the other hand, Shangguan Bing Shui's ability to suppress the enemy's movements, defeat them with ease and defend herself, and control the battlefield allowed her to buy time for Bai Zemin to reach the other areas of the battlefield and crush enemies as if he was crushing small and insignificant ants. The two of them formed the best team Sun Ling had ever seen in her life to this day. One used strength and agility, avoiding consuming mana and saving stamina by limiting his body's tasks, the other one used mana and magic, consuming mana but saving stamina by not moving from her position. If those two joined hands like that in every battle, was there any enemy really capable of standing up to them? Sun Ling felt that it was not possible. Not only did the two of them complement each other on the battlefield well enough to control large waves of enemies for large amounts of time, but they both seemed to have a great tactical. Understanding as a simple quick glance was enough for the other to understand what one of them was going to do. Swoosh! Suddenly, a large metallic colored vine appeared in front of Sun Ling and an instant later an explosion that forced her back a couple of steps rumbled over the vine. Mom, are you okay? Wu Jun rushed to her mother and looked at her with apprehension. Just now you were frozen, did something happen? No, Sun Ling shook her head, her face was pale with fear. I'm sorry, I got distracted for a moment. She had been so focused on others that she forgot for an instant where she was. I see. Wu Jun seemed to want to say something more, but knowing it was neither the place nor the time she told her mother to be careful, before continuing to strive hard to control and limit enemy movements, occasionally destroying several of them with a strong attack of empowered plants or thin strands of water. Sun Ling looked at the back of her daughter who was working really hard with a serious expression on her face, saving many among whom were people like Huang Tian from being injured. Then, Sun Ling looked at Shangguan Bing Shui and Bai Zemin before she sighed and started destroying enemies again. Sun Ling had absolute confidence in her daughter. Wu Jun was not only stunningly beautiful and whose sinful body would tempt even the holiest of men, but she was also an intelligent, hardworking, kind, capable, lovely, and talented woman. However, Sun Ling had to admit in her heart that when it came to Shangguan Bing Shui, she had yet to find a woman worthy of comparison. No matter if it was about her fairy-like beauty, the immortal and sacred aura that surrounded her. It didn't matter if it was about ability or talent, Shangguan Bing Shui was just flawless in each and every aspect. Sun Ling doubted with all her heart that there was any man capable of resisting if a woman like Shangguan Bing Shui focused her attention on him. Although so far Bai Zemin and Shangguan Bing Shui showed only friendly affection between them, it could not be excluded that this might change in the future. Sun Ling could only hope that Shangguan Bing Shui would not compete against Wu Jun for Bai Zemin's favor. Because as hard as it was for her as a mother to accept, Wu Jun probably had no means of winning. Oh well, Su Ling sighed and pushed her worries away easily as she muttered under her breath, if worst comes to worst then I just have to push that boy onto the path of polygamy. Even her husband Wu Kuchian had a second wife at the moment and while Sun Ling admittedly was not very happy with this arrangement as they had both been married for many years, she believed that with the passage of time she would get used to it. If even Wu Kuchian or weaker people could have more than one wife, then Sun Ling saw no reason why the leader of them all could not as well. Of course, Sun Ling had yet to learn more about the kind of man Bai Zemin was since to date she had not seen him be especially close to any woman except Shangguan Bing Shui, his daughter Wu Jun.
Kaijingi, and Nangong Lingxin. However, even if Bai Zemin was resilient today, he was still young. Evolved first order humans could easily live for 200 years while those who reached the second order could live up to 500 years without any problem as long as they were not killed. The second order was guaranteed for Bai Zemin and Wu Yijuan, and Shang Guanbing Shui was already there. Simply put, the three of them would live at worst 500 years. What good emperor of the past was not part of the group two wives and four concubines? As the future emperor of China and one of the strongest powerhouses of the future human race, having one or two wives should be nothing unusual for him. Sun Ling consoled herself before she started chopping up mechanical golems as if she was taking out her worries on them. Chapter 654 Shang Guan Bing Shui's Suspicions Regardless of whether it was Bai Zemin, Shang Guan Bing Shui, or Wu Yijuan, none of the three had the slightest idea of what Sun Ling was thinking. The three of them, like everyone else, were focusing solely and exclusively on doing their jobs to the best of their ability and had no time for distractions. Among all those present, only Bai Zemin and Shang Guan Bing Shui were capable of fighting thousands of first order enemies at the same time for long periods of time without fear of running out of stamina or having their reflexes and reaction speed deteriorate over time due to extreme focus in the midst of battle. This was because only the two of them possessed sufficient amount or purity of soul power to achieve such a thing. While it was true that Bai Zemin could destroy any mechanical golem as soon as it came out of the gate using his abilities or simply by turning annihilation of the falling sky into a great sword and, while it was true that Shang Guan Bing Shui could freeze all the golems in the place without affecting her allies thanks to her exquisite control over her mana and her skill ice maker, neither of them were willing to do such things for obvious reasons. To begin with, this whole operation was meant to test Bai Zemin's leadership. Moreover, this operation would also serve to win the hearts of the most powerful soul evolvers in the entire Chinese Renaissance because while proving that he could wipe out all the enemies by himself was a good thing, the effect would be far better if he saved the lives of a few of them in the process. After all, who wouldn't be grateful after someone saved their life? Bai Zemin and his closest subordinates had used this approach before and it always worked to perfection 90% of the time. The second reason was very simple but just as important as the first. Right in front of them, Bai Zemin and Shang Guan Bing Shui had the perfect battlefield. The stone square seemed indestructible no matter how much both of them broke loose. The number of enemies was large enough that both he and she had to process all kinds of information with their brains in record time in order to react accordingly and avoid being hit. Moreover, while the enemy's strength meant nothing to them, the weapons in the hands of the mechanical golems were undoubtedly sharp enough to hurt them a bit if they were careless. As if the previously mentioned was not enough, they could let these powerful soul evolvers improve their combat experience against large numbers of enemies whose overall strength surpassed them by a wide margin, improve their overall physical abilities, and of course, improve in the use of their main skills. In consequence of all the above, although it was a bit risky, both Bai Zemin and Shang Guan Bing Shui came to the same tactical agreement, without even a word. They both understood each other's thoughts and without hesitation set to work for it. Finally, after about two hours of non-stop combat, the last mechanical golem whose strength was comparable to that of a first-order soul evolver collapsed on the ground after having its head shattered by a mana arrow shot by Chen He. Chen He slowly released the oxygen inside his lungs as he slowly lowered his bow. Finally, it's over. Even Chen He who was on the verge of becoming a second-order existence but whose true power was already comparable to that of one could not help but feel his hair stand on end as he looked at the mountains of shattered golems. I can't believe we actually won. Feng Tianwu could barely stand upright at this point. Her gorgeous face was sickly pale and her pink lips had lost their color. Everything within her vision was blurry, a clear consequence of enormous mana consumption and lack of it in her organism. There were several mages who fainted as soon as they knew the battle was over while most of them fell to the ground gasping for air. The melee fighters were not much different except that some of them began to grunt under their breath as the wounds over their bodies began to ache now that the adrenaline was starting to recede. You all have done a good job. Bai Zemin's voice caught everyone's attention and those who could still keep their eyes open immediately turned to look at him. Walking slowly amidst thousands of crushed metal pieces that had once composed the bodies of the mechanical golems, Bai Zemin walked shoulder to shoulder alongside Shang Guan Bing Shui in the direction of the south of the square where the vast majority of the group was. Bai Zemin was still wearing the same deep dark blue armor he took from the Azura race whose name was Scales of the Sea General and which provided him with over 700 points of defense and also had the Ability to decrease the side effects of ice-slash-water type skills by 10%. In contrast to her silver-white hair, 
Shang Guanbing Shua wore armor that also provided around the same defense as the scales of the sea general that Bai Zemin wore only that on top of it were several layers of compressed ice to the point where its color had become very close to Bai Zemin's armor. Those two, are they really humans? Xiaoya could not help but mutter as she watched the two of them advance with steady steps and completely composed, neutral expressions which meant that they were not exhausted in the slightest despite the great battle they had gone through. Bai Zemin ignored the looks of veneration as did Shang Guanbing Shui. He surveyed everyone present and after a moment's consideration he commanded in a loud voice, Zhong De, Shang Guanbing Shui, Wu Yijuan, and Meng Qi. These four people will be the ones to accompany me to explore the inside of the second pagoda. What? Huang Tian looked at him with wide eyes and noted, what about the rest of us then? Of course, everyone else will stay behind. Bai Zemin said indifferently. He swept his eyes over the top and announced slowly, many of you are injured and while it is nothing serious it is best that you take this time to recover and eat something. The day is still long and you probably won't have time to rest during the night so you'd better take advantage of these rare opportunities for rest that you are given. Bai Zemin intended to explore every last pagoda today even if he had to go without sleep for another day as the faster they left this mountain range the better he would feel. It was already past 15 o'clock in the afternoon so it was necessary to keep moving. Wang Tian looked at the bloody wound on his right arm and gritted his teeth in frustration. Finally, he sighed and his shoulders slumped as he nodded obediently, even if he wanted to help and get more benefits, continuing to be stubborn here would only give everyone more trouble. Everyone understood that the leader was not going to change his mind and knew in their hearts that his words were valid so while some wanted to follow Bai Zemin and the others in the exploration of the ancient ruins no one said anything. Bai Zemin nodded and after giving some orders to Sun Ling and the rest he turned around with the intention of leaving. However, he and the others had not walked more than a few steps when a loud voice stopped their steps. Wait, mm? Bai Zemin turned slightly and looked at the person who had just stopped them. With a calm expression on his face, he asked, do you have something to say? I Feng Tianwu bit her lip as she tried her hardest to sound confident. She looked Bai Zemin in the eyes and said in a strong voice, I would like to go with you to explore. My skills have a lot of magic damage power and low cooldown, I also have a large-scale crowd control skill that I haven't used yet. If there are still enemies in the ruins I'm sure I can help. She looked sideways at Shang Guanbing Shua and Wu Yijuan, feeling as if a flame was burning in her chest the more she looked at them. Feng Tianwu was a mage just like the two of them but those two women who had been fighting all this time looked to be close to optimal condition while she could barely stay up. Especially Shang Guanbing Shua. Feng Tianwu had always been proud of herself, but for the first time, she felt inferior in every aspect not only as a woman but also as a soul evolver. Therefore, she wanted to prove to herself that she did not lose to anyone. No. Bai Zemin's cold voice brought her back to reality and when she met his black eyes all she saw was indifference. Those eyes were the eyes with which someone usually looked at a stranger on their way home. You barely have any mana remaining, your physical abilities are barely above those of an average soul evolver and your stamina has been mostly consumed. Bai Zemin pointed out her current weaknesses calmly and finished, if we find danger within the ruins, with your current condition you will be nothing but a burden. Bai Zemin turned to leave along with the rest and said in a leisurely voice, make the most of it to recover. Your strength will probably be needed in the immediate future. Feng Tianwu wanted to say something but in the end, she closed her mouth and clenched her fists in frustration as she watched the backs of the five people disappear beyond the pagoda door, clearly going into an isolated room as before. Finally, she sighed and let her fists relax. Sitting on the ground and feeling somewhat defeated, Feng Tianwu paid heed to Bai Zemin and used the time she had been given to recover. At the end of the day, although she was a proud and stubborn woman, the Feng Tianwu of the past was gone. The current Feng Tianwu was mature enough to understand when others were right. Feng Hong was in a better overall condition compared to Feng Tianwu, after all, he was stronger than his daughter. He sat down next to her and after watching her silently for several seconds asked in a low voice, Tianwu, do you know the leader from somewhere? Feng Tianwu did not answer immediately and instead asked, why do you ask? She kept her eyes closed, trying to recover her stamina and mana to acceptable levels as fast as possible. No, for nothing in particular. It's just that I felt that was the case. Feng Tianwu opened her eyes and as she looked at the huge silver pagoda where the group of five had just entered she thought for a moment before replying, in the past, I met a person named Bai Zemin. But the Bai Zemin I knew and this Bai Zemin who is leading us are not the same person. Feng Hong looked at his daughter in confusion but as he saw her closing her eyes again he shook his head and did not continue with the matter as he could feel that things were not that simple. He had already stepped into his daughter's life once and would not do it again a second time, he would simply try to support her in any way possible. 
Feng Tianwu opened her eyes again after her father closed his, and as she looked at the pagoda several meters distant, she couldn't help but think of another possibility. Maybe, the Baizemin she knew was always this Baizemin who led them, it was just that her past self had no way of noticing it. Because in the end, she never paid any real attention to him. On the other hand, after Baizemin stepped past the door of the second pagoda he and the others immediately felt that weird sensation of stepping through an invisible curtain. By the time they all opened their eyes again, they were in a space completely different from what the inside of a pagoda should be like. This place was different from the previous one in all aspects, except that like the room where the pills were, in this one there were also several magic circles drawn on the walls, on the ceiling, and on the floor. The walls were stained with a faint purple-black color, the floor was covered with ashes, there was a simple furnace set up near a workbench right next to a mountain of manifilled charcoal. An ancient welding machine, a grinder useful for cutting and polishing metals, pliers slash pincers slash tongs, chisels of different sizes, and a few items more. But Shang Guanbing Shui was so distracted in her own thoughts that she was not even paying attention to the room and her focus was on Bai Zemin. She for some reason felt that the female fire mage from before whose name she couldn't be bothered to remember seemed to know Bai Zemin. The two of them had been talking alone previously and now she was also the only one who even after hearing Bai Zemin's words tried to change his mind. Friends? Or could it be? Her thoughts were interrupted by Wu Yijuan's astonished voice. Blacksmith shop? Wu Yijuan blinked curiously as she looked at the surroundings somewhat disappointed, this room looks so small and there are so few goodies. Don't tell me this is the treasure? Bai Zemin said nothing and with bright eyes took the first step forward. He picked up the hammer resting on the workbench and as he saw the tool's records his eyes lit up even more and his heart sparkled with delight. This place was clearly a huge treasure even though the size of the room was thousands of times smaller compared to the previous one. M. Size isn't always important after all. Bai Zemin nodded to himself. But if it's big it's better. Lilith cut in with a mischievous voice. Chapter 655 Hammer of Excellence Worktable of the Dreamer the forging hammer that Baizemin had crafted using a precious rank 2 metal, refined crusher, was a rank 1 weapon with considerably high physical and magical attack power. Thanks to this hammer, he was able to mold the hardness of a rank 2 metal to his liking which with his normal old hammer would have been no different than an impossible task. However, it was true that Baizemin could hardly be considered a blacksmith who was just getting into the world of the forge. His skill blacksmithing of first order maximum level was nothing when it came to real blacksmiths that had forging as their main profession and he didn't need to be told by Lilith for him to know that. There were definitely people more talented than him out there when it came to forging equipment. Even so, Baizemin had always been quite satisfied with his forging ability. He even managed to forge a rank 3 sword with great physical attack power and excellent options. Even the equipment that the Azura race used did not seem to be a big deal in the eyes of Baizemin since he could forge them on his own. This caused him to mistakenly think that while there should be a good blacksmith somewhere in the universe, he probably wouldn't come across one anytime soon or perhaps never in his lifetime. However, after the records of the hammer in his hand flashed in the eyes of Baizemin he finally realized how much he lacked when it came to ability and experience in forging equipment. Hammer of Excellence Dash One-Handed Weapon Rank 3 Physical attack power, 0. Magical attack power, 0. Durability, 20,000 slash 20,000. Options dash. 1. Increases by 20% the probabilities of success when forging a rank 2 equipment. 2. Chances of the blacksmiths will being transmitted to the options of the new equipment forged using hammer of excellence are increased by 15%. 3. Increases the shaping speed of any metal below rank 4 by 50%. Description, as its name suggests, this hammer is the perfect piece of equipment for any novice intermediate blacksmith. Made by a high-level blacksmith with the intention of leaving its goodwill to the next generation to come before its life came to an end. By Zemin closed his eyes and as he held the hammer in his hands he couldn't help but sigh. Such a good forging hammer. I really have a lot to learn yet. Humans were creatures who by excellence believed they were the best at everything, and unless they saw someone else doing it better than them. They would probably live their whole lives self-deluding themselves. Baizemin was no different in this regard because although he knew that somewhere in the vast universe there must exist a blacksmith more talented than him, in his heart he still felt slightly pleased since to date he had not seen any equipment forged by someone else that could truly amaze him. Even when he invaded a world in its third stage such a thing did not happen. But now, Baizemin finally understood the point that there were mountains beyond mountains and the thought that it was not good to be too arrogant took even stronger root in his heart. Intrigued by Baizemin's complimentary attitude, Shang Guanbing Shui and Wei Juan approached and inspected the hammer as well once he put it down on the workbench again. 
Although the two women did not understand very much about forging, it was not necessary to be a blacksmith genius to comprehend that the hammer in front of them was a true masterpiece. Shang Guanbing Shui had been present during the forging process of Bai Zemin's hammer and she had thought it was an excellent piece of equipment for blacksmithing. However, it was only after seeing the hammer of excellence that she understood the true meaning of the word excellent. In contrast to my hammer which can also be used as an attack weapon, this hammer of excellence is not suitable for fighting at all despite being a rank 3 equipment. It is clear that the blacksmith who forged it knew how to focus and transmit its will to the tool it wanted to craft in such a way that a forging hammer is only good for forging, as it is supposed to be. In exchange for serving nothing but forging equipment, this hammer is in fact excellent in terms of fulfilling its purpose. By Zemin pointed as he caressed the work table. Work table of the Dreamer Dash, Special Object, Rank 3, Durability, 100,000 slash 100,000, Options Dash, 1, decreases by 30% the probability of failure during the forging process. 2, decreases drastically the chances of failure during the magic forge process. 3, equipment of rank 3 or lower completed on the work table of the dreamer has a 1% chance of replicating itself. Description, a work table with the capacity to help fulfill the dreams of those just embarking on the long, endless path of forging and whose options are comparable to those of a rank 4 special object. The expression of Byzemin froze as did the hand with which he was just a moment ago caressing the surface of the seemingly normal work table whose appearance could be considered as ugly due to the black purple ash black stains indelible with time. This. My god. Even the work table was a rank 3 object. A treasure. Byzemin almost died of a heart attack as the thought of possibly having left behind such a divine object crossed his mind. This was the first time he had seen a work table specially crafted by post-apocalyptic materials, and in fact, with all that was going on in his life lately and no time to stop to think everything through clearly, by Zemin had overlooked how important a simple work table could be to a blacksmith. The option 1 decreased the chances of failure when forging an object was already amazing enough as a support for any blacksmith regardless of how excellent they were. The option 2 decreased the chances of failure during magic forging. Update faster? Please come to p.a.n.d.an.ovel This option alone made a novice like Byzemin want to kneel down and take as his master the person who left these things behind. As for the option number 3. While there was only a minuscule 1% chance of it happening, that 1% meant that in theory, 1 out of every 100 pieces of equipment forged would be duplicated. In low numbers, the option number 3 was quite insignificant in comparison to the other two, however, when the numbers grew, the power of the option number 3 grew as well. When it came to equipping an entire army, this option was undoubtedly a godsend for the blacksmith and destined to strengthen an entire faction or even race. Besides, if by any coincidence by Zemin forged some rank 3 equipment and if by any coincidence any of them got duplicated, he could go to sleep with a smile of happiness on his face for several weeks. Shang Guanbing Shui and Wei Juan were speechless as they watched by Zemin gulping and looking at every single thing inside the workshop no matter its size with wolfish eyes just like a hungry man. After being released from prison looking at a beautiful woman, when Byzemin thought that all these objects destined for the forge were precious treasures, he could not contain himself and began to inspect the records of each one. He did not discriminate by size and even looked at the smallest chisel in detail. Ha 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 ha. He laughed out loud and forgetting that he had an audience said in a cheerful voice, this daddy has really gotten rich. Rich, I tell you. All these babies belong to me. Shang Guanbing Shui approached Wu Yijuan and while looking at Bai Zemin out of the corner of her eye, she whispered in her ear, Yijuan, it seems he's into daddy girl stuff. You'd better be careful from now on. The corner of Wu Yijuan's mouth twitched a couple of times and she blushed slightly but didn't comment on it. On the other hand, Lilith sneaked up to Shang Guanbing Shui and in her ear whispered something in a voice that only she could hear. Shut up. Shang Guanbing Shui suddenly yelled out loud, startling Wu Yijuan and Bai Zemin. Bing Shui, are you okay? Wu Yijuan looked at her in shock. Could it be that there were ghosts or evil spirits in this place? She subconsciously raised her guard. On the other hand, Bai Zemin understood that most likely Lilith had just made something as he could see anger on Shang Bing Shui's slightly flushed face. Humph. You can't fool me, you little perverted pigeon. Lilith snorted and this time she did not hide her voice from Bai Zemin. Shang Bing Shui gritted her teeth and ignoring Wu Yijuan's weird eyes she looked at Bai Zemin gasping in indignation. Bai Zemin did not know whether to laugh or cry as she looked at him as if she was blaming him for something. My dear great aunt, did I do something to offend you? Bai Zemin was confirming more and more every day the wise words of his father who claimed even after more than 20 years of marriage that women were simply incomprehensible. But then again, 
Baizemin looked at the piece of charcoal in his hand and couldn't help but get happy as he slowly said, to think that these charcoals actually contain black fire sulfur. Update faster? Please come to p.n.o.vel It seems that the original owner and creator of these items didn't have a powerful flame so he or she had no choice but to look for different means to be able to melt metals and other things of higher quality. Black fire sulfur? Shang Guanbing Shui suddenly seemed to think of something and forgetting for a moment what had just happened remarked in surprise. Isn't that one of the requirements needed to make magic powder? Yeah. Bai Zemin chuckled and threw the piece of charcoal beside the rest before slowly saying, that formula has been resting too long. It's time for us to see what this so-called magic powder thing can do. The amount of progress that the faction led by Bai Zemin would make once everything they acquired during this expedition was integrated and slowly began to take effect will undoubtedly be colossal, to say the least. After making sure he had left nothing to be inspected, Bai Zemin with the help of Wu Yijuan and Shang Guan Bing Shui disassembled everything and loaded everything onto an ice wagon that the latter had, created in the middle of the teleportation circle. I knew it was right to bring you. For some reason I feel like I've been reduced to a cargo builder. After joking with Shang Guan Bing Shui, Bai Zemin looked to a corner of the room and with a weird expression approached. Meng Qi, what have you been doing all this time? Ah, Meng Qi jumped in fright when she felt someone tapping her shoulder. She turned around and upon seeing the face of the person she calmed down, finally remembering where she was. She looked up by Zemin with eyes filled with reproach and stomped on the ground, Big brother, are you stupid? You scared me. The corner of by Zemin's mouth twitched again. For some reason, all the women around him were slowly starting to become a bit annoyed and blamed him for everything even though he hadn't done anything. Cough. So, is something wrong? We're leaving. By Zemin pointed to the other two women who were waiting for them to teleport outside. About that. Meng Chi frowned and turned to look at the wall in front of her where there was another one of so many magic circles in the room. She pointed to a particular rune in the composition and explained, Big brother, do you see this rune? I remember seeing it in the teleportation magic circle. However, I am sure that this magic circle here is not meant for teleportation as the other runes that compose it clearly have another purpose. Bai Zemin looked at the rune his sister was pointing to but he had no idea about runes so he didn't know what she meant. In the end, all he could do was look at Meng Qi again with questioning eyes and with a movement of his head told her to continue. I, I'm not quite sure. Meng Qi paused from what she was about to say and instead took out the notebook from before where she had drawn many runes, magic circles, and where she had written down the characteristics and functions of each magic circle, while looking at it with a thoughtful expression on her face, she commented, this rune actually means chameleon, and its function seems to be to hide or camouflage. This would also explain the reason why from outside the pagodas the teleportation circle is not visible and that weird feeling we feel when we walk through the doors. Oh? By Zemin's ears twitched slightly as if they had picked up some interesting information. He looked up at the wall, more specifically the magic circle that had been engraved in white, and asked in a careful voice, So, you're telling me that this magic circle is hiding a room and that this part of the wall is a lie? I'm not sure. Meng Chi shook her head before looking at the wall and saying confidently, However, I am confident that at the very least the odds are more than 70%. It's just that there might also be defense mechanisms so we'd better be careful. Okay, how should I do it? Bai Zemin stretched out his hand but he actually felt the wall there and when he tried to break it he was not surprised to find that his strength didn't seem to be anywhere, near enough. Therefore, he could only rely on Meng Chi for this. Break the magic circle. Meng Chi quickly explained, magic circles can be erased with flames depending on the rank and this magic circle was clearly not drawn with intentions of causing so much. Trouble so big brother's flame should be more than enough. All right, leave it to me. Bai Zemin nodded before saying in a deep voice, Meng Qi, go with Bing Shua and Wu Juan. Okay, be careful. Meng Qi nodded and obediently stepped back a few meters until she reached the teleport circle. Bai Zemin extended his right hand and rested it on top of the white magic circle. When he confirmed Shang Guan Bing Shua's nod, he quietly said, Little Blue, burn it. Swoosh, swoosh. A small cluster of blue flames blazed on his palm and in an instant enveloped the white ink devouring the magic circle and destroying it in less than a second before it disappeared inside by Zemin's body once again. By Zemin immediately felt the hard touch that he had felt from his palm a few moments ago begin to tremble and sway like a lake. By Zemin retracted his hand and smiled faintly, effectively, Meng Chi was right. Like a mirage or illusion, the image of that section in front of which by Zemin stood began to distort more and more until after a few seconds it disappeared without a trace, revealing a simple wooden door. Chapter 656, Highest Treasures Great Hope
Shang Guanbing Shui and Wei Juan who were preparing to return to the stone square through the teleportation circle immediately were surprised to see a secret door appearing where a moment ago there was a wall. While such things were not unusual considering the current world and the existence of the magic circles, the fear of possibly having left the place and in the process leaving behind treasures that could help to increase the overall strength of their faction or them individually was truly terrifying. In this world that was plagued with dangers and where death practically whispered sweet words in their ears every second of the day, opportunities to become more powerful should be cherished and never wasted, this applied especially so for opportunities to become stronger that did not require risking one's life. Meng Chi patted her not so big but certainly not small chest and sighed visibly relieved that nothing bad had happened. While her class allowed her to understand more about the world she found herself in the longer she resided in it, her general knowledge of runes and magic circles was superficial at best and most of her knowledge came mainly from the notes she had written and analyzed before. If something wrong happened because of her previous words then Meng Chi could never have forgiven herself. After all, the existence of magic circles was undoubtedly mysterious to them and if one of those magic circles could teleport their bodies to other spaces then there were definitely many more with the ability to launch powerful attacks. Bai Zemin did not let his guard down even though everything seemed to be over, the last thing he wanted was to get his butt bitten while smiling. However, when his right hand turned the door handle and the door creaked in its backward motion, nothing out of the ordinary happened. Cough, cough, cough. Baizemin suddenly began to cough and subconsciously took a step back as he covered his nose and mouth. Baizemin, big brother. Shang Guanbing Shui and Wei Juan were immediately shocked and cried out his name loudly when they saw what was happening. Similar to Meng Qi, who cried out with affection and concern in her manner of addressing him, the two women thought that when the door broke open a poisonous mechanism was shot out from inside. Cough, 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 damn it. Bai Zemin finally managed to regain his composure and while waving his hand in front of him he complained loudly, this room is dust free so I thought it would be the same case with the hidden room. But I was wrong. Bai Zemin was sure that whoever had purposely hidden this blacksmith shop had not put some maintenance or basic cleaning magic circle inside the hidden room as he or she had done with the main room. He was even imagining an old man dressed in Taoist robes and a long white beard laughing in his grave right now because of his little prank. Dust? This guy. Sigh. Wei Juan blinked in surprise, Shang Guanbing Shui gritted her teeth and looked at his back as if she wanted to bite him to pieces, and Meng Qi simply sighed in relief. Ah? Bai Zemin turned around and while scratching his head said in embarrassment, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Hee <laughs> hee. Lilith couldn't help but chuckle and secretly shake her head as she watched Bai Zemin's expression. The current him had really grown and evolved tremendously as a sentient human. Lilith couldn't imagine the Baizemin of three months ago showing such a pure and sincere expression as he was doing right now. After waiting for a few minutes to let the flying dust inside the hidden room seep into the main room and be cleared automatically, Baizemin in the company of three women visible to the naked eye and one hidden from everyone walked into the hidden room with careful steps. However, there was not much inside the room and in fact Baizemin was slightly disappointed when he saw the single bookshelf with several weird stones. Hey, you three. Was I the only one who was expecting some rank 3 or even rank 4 precious equipment? Bai Zemin forced a smile without looking back. Honestly, I was expecting something like that too. Wei Juan nodded and right behind her Shang Guan Bing Shui and Meng Qi also expressed their agreement. Little brother Zemin, you'd better not jump to conclusions to avoid getting bitten by your own words later. Lilith covered her mouth and let out a chuckle as she said those words. M? Baizemin blinked and his slightly decayed mood immediately raised after hearing Lilith's words. There was no way she would say those words if what was in front of them was not something good, or was there. Therefore, any disappointment he had ever felt before vanished from Baizemin's heart without a trace in just an instant. Let me see what this is all about. He advanced without delay and upon arriving before the bookshelf placed his hand on one of the stones. This particular stone was grayish white with some golden veins and its size was nothing special, only the size of a fist. Update faster? Please come to p. and de novel however, when the records of this stone appeared in Baizemin's retina, the only reason why he did not scream out loud was because the shock that shook his heart was far stronger than his happiness. Mutant expanding wall, mana eater, rank 4 an extremely rare type of item slash creature that is among the few passive mana eaters capable of transforming into a wall and expanding on its own only after receiving unclassified soul stones as a source of growth. It can grow up to 5,000 meters high and withstand a maximum of 100 attacks from a fourth order existence before collapsing. At first, Baizemin froze and even forgot to breathe for several seconds. 
However, when his brain finally accepted the reality of what was happening, his entire body trembled fiercely as if he was facing the coldest place in the universe. His expression turned tremendously serious and he subconsciously squeezed the grayish-white stone so hard that had it not been for its hardness it would have turned into crushed dust by now. Seeing the extremely serious expression on the face of Bai Zemin, Shang Guan Bing Shui and the other two beauties subconsciously looked at the surroundings cautiously as the three of them could not help but think that he probably detected some formidable enemy. However, nothing could be further from the truth. Bing Shui, look at this. Bai Zemin extended the stone to her without hiding how serious his thoughts were. She frowned slightly and took the stone cautiously, however, when she wished to know the records of the object and the soul record unpeeled the small window in her eyes her pupils trembled fiercely, and just like Bai Zemin, she froze. Her beautiful blue eyes widened wider and wider as she murmured in shock, this is, this is. Shang Guan Bing Shui was so shocked that she could not even speak properly confusing Meng Qi and most of all surprising Wei Juan as she knew well what kind of person her good sister was. Only Bai Zemin understood Shang Guan Bing Shui's feelings as he had just experienced them in person. He took a deep breath and said in a serious voice, the information about this stuff cannot be divulged no matter what. Especially not until we succeed in taking full control over the Chinese Renaissance. When Bai Zemin said those last words, he looked especially at Wei Juan. She looked at him in confusion, but when Shang Guan Bing Shui handed her the mana eater called Mutant Expanding Wall, she finally understood what was going on. Wui Juan gasped in shock as she exclaimed with delight, Amazing! With this treasure, we can build a super secure and unpenetrable city. Then, Wui Juan looked at Bai Zemin and nodded, Don't worry about me. I won't say a word about this. Just as Wui Juan had said moments before, the mutant expansive wall was a treasure that could withstand basically all kinds of attacks, even a nuclear bomb would not be able to bring it down. Moreover, being able to grow up to 5,000 meters high, even by Zemin had no way of breaking through it with ease, even less so if several defenses were mounted on the walls. In other simple-to-understand words, the mutant expansion wall was a treasure that would allow the weakest to build a large safe land. Who wouldn't want such a thing in the midst of the apocalypse? Even the holiest and kindest of men would probably try to steal it at any cost. Wui Juan understood Bai Zemin's apprehensions. What he feared was not that the mana eater would be stolen since with his strength anyone who tried to do so would simply be sending themselves into the wolf's den. What he feared was that someone, especially someone from Wui Juan's family, would become greedy and blinded which would eventually end up bringing problems that for obvious reasons everyone wanted to avoid. M. I have confidence in you. Bai Zemin nodded with a slight smile and his heart pumping with joy. With this mana eater, the possibilities are endless, exclaimed Meng Qi. Her face was a graphic representation of the word happiness as she held the small stone in her hands and said, we can build a city that can house millions. Even second-order existences will have severe difficulty crossing the walls and only third-order existences that are a rarity will become our enemies to keep at bay. A single second-order existence had the ability to crush everything in its path if it did not meet an enemy within its stage or an anomaly. However, with the mutant expansive wall, those second-order existences had suddenly lost a great deal of their terrifying appearance in Meng Qi's eyes. That's right. Big brother, didn't you have blueprints to build a super cannon capable of threatening even third-order enemies? Meng Qi suddenly looked at Bai Zemin with glittering eyes and without waiting for a reply she continued in awe. If we can build several hundred of those cannons and place them on top of the walls so that the soul evolvers in charge of firing it can see the terrain from several kilometers away, our transcendent faction's domain in the area will be absolute. Bai Zemin understood Meng Qi's joy as he himself was joyful. However, upon hearing his dear little sister casually wanting to take out several hundred goblin magic cannons, he did not know whether to laugh or cry. Forget about several hundred, his faction had not yet been able to develop a single one. Long before, Bai Zemin had handed over a handmade copy of the blueprint for building the goblin magic cannon. It was his intention to build one of those cannons using some rank 2 metal, as well as normal gunpowder, since even if it was destroyed after a shot, it would surely be a useful weapon in times of urgency. However, no matter how hard the development teams tried, every attempt ended in failure. Maybe, maybe we can build some cannons. Shang Guan Bing Shui suddenly said, looking towards the bookshelf in front of them that still had around 40 or 50 more stones slash metals. Update faster? Please come to pan.dn.o.vel even. We could even potentially build several energy generators using the blueprint we got from that night battle in the forest. Indeed. Bai Zemin nodded and after taking a deep breath he turned and picked up a stone slash metal. The records of the object soon flashed in his retina. 
Jeslysium, metal, rank 3 excellent material for the construction of light energy weapons or mana-powered vehicles. Despite not being especially hard, its lightness makes it easy to move and its characteristic of reducing its own weight makes anything constructed from Jeslysium even lighter than objects, constructed from any lower rank metal. Byzemin was happy but he could not deny that at the same time he felt some disappointment, disappointment which was soon swept away. While the Jeslysium was a rank 3 mental, its description specified light energy weapons and its lightness was surely proof of its weakness. He did not believe that the Jeslysium could withstand the firepower of the goblin magic cannon. However, weren't there several stone slash metals that still needed to be explored? Byzemin was sure that at least one of them should meet the requirements for the construction of the cannon and generator. Ah, what happened? Wu Yijuan's cry made Byzemin automatically turn in her direction with concern. But all he saw was her smiling from ear to ear while holding some kind of heavy-looking stone as big as three basketballs together. This metal called obriantine is just what we were looking for. Hard, tough, and it even increases the power of heavy armaments below rank 4 by 10%. Let me see it. Byzemin immediately advanced and like a ghost took the metal away from Wuijuan. Seeing that Wuijuan's words were true, Byzemin did not fight Shangguan Bing Shui who had just snatched the metal called obriantine from him and instead clenched his fists tightly. Finally, we are finally able to make energy generators for our bases and defensive cannons on our walls, he said with gritted teeth and bubbling excitement. With all these precious metals and stones I refuse to believe that we can't build at least a few dozen cannons and twenty or so generators. Shangguan Bing Shui, far from looking like a cold and arrogant woman, looked like a little girl with a smile as warm as the sun on her face when she finally realized what was happening. Everything they were working hard for was finally showing results after so much sacrifice. In their heads, the image of a colossal-sized city with tightly packed defenses and beautiful well-lit buildings with people walking with smiles on their faces through the streets began to take shape. For the first time since all this chaos broke out, he saw real hope for mankind, light among so much darkness. Chapter 657 Opening the Third Pagoda Lion Leading an Army of Lions When Baizemin in the company of Shangguan Bing Shui, Wu Yijuan, and Meng Qi left the ancient ruin that was probably hidden under the stone square and the second silver pagoda, he was naturally greeted by the group that had been waiting anxiously outside. Although the most exhausted ones had already fallen asleep as they couldn't stand the mental exhaustion, stamina consumption, mana consumption, and the wounds covering parts of their bodies, the vast majority actually stayed awake and were simply resting sitting down after having eaten. While it had only been about two hours since the group of four had accessed to the second pagoda, two hours of rest was enough for most of them to recover a great part of their stamina. After all, unlike the high stamina of people like Baizemin and Shangguan Bing Shui, 90% of those present did not even reach 100 points so it was naturally easier to recover figuratively speaking. Blacksmithing? The expression on the faces of each of them was a bit disappointed to see that what was in the ice wagon were old machines and some artifacts intended for forging equipment. After all, as soul evolvers what mattered most to them were those things that could boost their power in some way or another or be of use in times of need. For example, while the pills from before would surely not be consumed by any of them in the short term, if at some point in this expedition a danger occurred that was great enough to make the annihilation of the team a possibility, then the leader would surely hand over any pill capable of helping that possibility of annihilation disappear. On the other hand, what were the use of a dirty table and some fancy-looking hammer? Byzemin naturally shook his head in his heart at the reactions of the others. While it was true that blacksmithing was not useful for fighters in the short term, learning to forge your own equipment not only gave you the ability to repair and not depend on the availability of a blacksmith, but at times like a deep forest internment you didn't need to worry about being left without a weapon or armor in case you broke them during a lethal battle. Of course, he would not discuss such things with other people as everyone was free to think what they wanted. Byzemin personally would take anything that helped him become stronger regardless of how cumbersome it was. Besides, these people would surely be even more astonished than when they found the pills in the first ancient ruin if they knew about what Byzemin had hidden in his spatial storage ring and what those objects represented for a faction with the intention of setting up a firm foothold in this chaotic new world. Byzemin noticed that all the armor and weapons that the mechanical golems from before had been piled up in a single place and after some questioning, he knew that it was the work of those who were not so tired and wanted to help, this made him have a very good impression of this group of people, more than he already had. Among all those present, even the weakest soldiers or the lowest level soul evolver were all brave warriors. Regardless of whether it was when they stepped into the gloomy dark forest, when the weaver ants ambushed them, or when they walked for more than 10 hours in a row, 
None of them turned around to run away no matter how challenging the situation seemed to be and instead bravely fought with tooth and nail even after losing their weapons. Such people were commendable and Byzemin did not want them to die in this place, therefore, he ordered them all to rest a bit more before heading to the third pagoda. You have really changed. Shang Guanbing Shui remarked as she helped Byzemin put all the armor and weapons regardless of whether they were in good condition or broken into a new ice wagon. Oh, why are you mentioning it so suddenly? Bai Zemin raised an eyebrow in surprise before saying, by the way, it's amazing that all these weapons and armor are rank 1. I even thought I saw some armor better than the one I'm wearing now. If it were the past you probably wouldn't let the troops rest any more than necessary. Update faster? Please come to Shang Guan Bing Shui said, overlooking his comment about weapons and armors. The current you became more. How shall I put it? Kind. No, that's not the word. You mean the current me is more empathetic to my troops? Bai Zemin chuckled. Mm. That's not the word I was looking for either, but yes, empathetic is a good way to put it. She nodded slightly. Byzemin shook his head and did not continue with the matter. After the evolution of Stone Heart, Byzemin's coldness towards the whole world was naturally not so unnatural anymore. The current him knew and understood when he needed to be cold or when he didn't so he had certainly become a man more worthy of the word leader. About an hour and a half later, over 35,000 close-ranged weapons and rank 1 heavy plate armor were stored and sealed in an ice wagon. Although there were only about 5,000 pieces of each that were healthy and could be used immediately as the other 30,000 would probably have to be repaired or even completely melted down to be reused, those 5,000 sets were enough to raise an entirely new army of soul evolvers even if you ignored the 10,000 pieces of rank 0 that they obtained from the previous battle against the unclassified mechanical golems. Even those broken pieces could not be ignored as the process of reforging or repairing them would undoubtedly be easier than forging everything from zero, saving the blacksmiths a lot of time. At this point, the group led by Byzemin had lost 10 soul evolvers and 5 soldiers. However, those casualties occurred during the assault on the first pagoda as no one expected the assault of over 20,000 energy beams, let alone being surrounded by over two dozen thousand non-sentient golems equipped to the teeth. Although it was not 100% perfect as everyone would probably like, the truth was that in the eyes of everyone present the achievements of the group were already mind-blowing, to say the least. Under the leadership of Byzemin, they managed to obtain three wagons as big as giant cargo trucks filled with objects that in some way or another would definitely boost the faction's strength to new heights and would help to recover the lost homeland. Looking at the firm, straight back of that black-haired young man gazing into the distance, everyone felt as if they were looking at a huge insurmountable mountain. However, everyone present knew that they did not need to climb over that insurmountable mountain. They only needed to follow the path that the mountain had and was preparing to go far. Everyone, that's enough rest. Byzemin shouted aloud after another 30 minutes and when the clock struck 7 in the evening, only a little over an hour before the sun descended, he ordered, those wounded who cannot raise your weapons, retreat to the camp at the border of the stone square. The rest, get ready to assault the third pagoda. Surprisingly, however, everyone gritted their teeth and even those who were still wounded struggled to hide their wounds. They bravely stood up and with firm expressions stepped forward. Leader, everyone is ready. Update faster perks? Google search Pandotta novel, remember to remove punctuation Sun Ling approached by Zemin with a smile and as she turned to observe the expressions on the faces of the soul evolvers and soldiers armed with electromagnetic rifles, she whispered, this is the first time I've seen an expedition troop with such high spirits. How does it feel to know that you are the cause of their resolutions? Byzemin paused for two minutes to watch the eyes of those present before turning around. Move! Like gladiators following their general, they all stepped forward with melee fighters in front equipped with rank 1 armor and mages and shooters in the back armed with electromagnetic rifles and more. Light armor that facilitated the movement. There was no doubt in their eyes and their steps did not falter in any way despite knowing that what they would be facing soon would probably be far more dreadful than what they had faced so far. Sun Ling looked at Byzemin's back before looking at the small team advancing a few meters behind. For some reason, that small team that could previously at some point be ignored gave Sun Ling a feeling of oppression that only existences on the level of her husband or her brother could give her. Then, she understood the phrase of the famous Alexander the Great, I am not fearful of an army of lions led by a sheep, but I am fearful of an army of sheep led by a lion. Then, what will happen when a lion leads an army of lions? Sun Ling couldn't help but get excited about the future about to come. Arriving before the third pagoda and the first one on the left in the deepest part of the square, Byzemin naturally lay down on the ground to read under the chins of the two bronze lion statues. 
After that, he stood with an unperturbed expression on his face, attracting everyone's curiosity. During the previous two instances, Baizeman looked quite reluctant after learning that he needed to spend thousands of valuable soul stones to open the pagodas. Then why did he look so relaxed? Then, Shang Guanbing Shui hurriedly asked, How many soul stones do we need this time? Could it be that the number was smaller compared to last time? Oh, not much. Baizeman nodded and said calmly, We only need 50,000 unclassified for each statue and 21st order in total. W. Shang Guanbing Shui choked when she wanted to say something and almost suffocated to death when she heard what Baizeman said. 100,000 unclassified and 21st order? Chin he called out with his eyes wide open. Damn it, isn't that the same as wanting to shear us completely? If it weren't for the ant army we would have to empty a considerable portion of our treasury to gather that many soul stones. The number of unclassified soul stones in Baizeman's possession exceeded 1 million, and he was not short of first order soul stones either. However, that number of soul stones was not as large as it seemed to be if he took into account all the uses soul stones had. Just to upgrade the lowest quality skills of a couple of hundred would require at least several tens of thousands or even over a hundred thousand soul stones. And taking into account that soul stones were also the power source of the electromagnetic rifles, future transportation vehicles, energy generators, cannons, and even the mutant expansive wall, one would easily realize that even five million would be used up faster than it seemed. It's not like we have any other choice. Baizeman calmly replied and with a wave of his hand, thousands of shining soul stones began to rain down from his spatial storage ring, falling to the ground with soft tinkling sounds. Besides, what we can obtain from the ancient ruins definitely outweighs the investment, and if not immediately it surely will in the long run. As a leader, Baizeman could not just think about now but he also needed to think about tomorrow. It was good and all about immediate strength, but Baizeman also knew that today's strength would not be enough to fight the enemies that would appear in the future. Update faster perks? Google search pan.deno.ve.l, remember to remove punctuation precisely for that reason, he appreciated even a simple formula written on paper that would serve to boost the future power of mankind. Even the broken and unusable electromagnetic rifles were not left behind by Baizeman as proof that he was not willing to give up anything that could be of use. Hearing Baizeman's reasoning, Chin he nodded after a moment's thought. He was the only one among the archers present who had not exchanged his weapon for an electromagnetic rifle and still used his magic grade treasure. The destructive power and flexibility that his energy bow provided was something Chin he would not give up so easily unless he found something a lot better in every aspect. Bai Zemin with the assistance of Wui Juan began to throw soul stone by soul stone into the jaws of the two bronze lion statues. This was a task that could take normal people hours to complete, but with the supernatural agility of evolved humans could be completed in minutes. Approximately 20 minutes later, Baizeman stopped when only one first order soul stone was left for the double door of the third pagoda to open. He turned and ordered in a deep voice, I want everyone to move back 300 meters and stay away. Close combatants, your job will be to slow down any enemy that manages to slip through and prevent them from reaching the mages and shooters. Are we clear? Roger. There were no questions or doubts, only confirmation. There was no one among those present who doubted the strength of Baizeman. Even when they didn't know how dangerous the enemy was to come, none of them thought even for a second that he wouldn't be able to face it. The trust of every soul evolver or soldier present towards Baizeman had taken root in their hearts after so many awesome victories. So, shall we begin? A slightly excited smile appeared on his face, a smile which contrasted the ferocity in his eyes. The characteristics of a berserker really are the same when it comes to the battlefield. Lilith shook her head and let out an amused chuckle. It was at that moment when the last first order soul stone fell into the bronze lion's mouth. Flash! The two statues released a powerful blue radiance, a radiance that in moments began to spread through the lines and runes that formed the huge magic circle that covered the stone square. Soon, six out of ten parts of the huge magic circle were glowing with four out of ten parts being light green and the last two tenths parts pale blue. Crack. A faint sound of something cracking rang out in the middle of the deathly silent stone square. Under the watchful eyes of the fighters and shooters more than 300 meters away, the huge doors of the third pagoda opened slightly. Flash. The characteristic demonic red eyes glowed amidst the gloomy darkness, indicating that the enemy was ready to slaughter them. Chapter 658 Electromagnetic Rifles Power and Mechanical Golem Variant when the first pair of red eyes glowed with demonic radiance amidst the darkness that plunged the inside of the pagoda into a world of shadows, Baizeman did not wait for the pagoda doors to open as before and instead waved his hand as he sent a small strand of mana into his liquid storage pearl. Swoosh! 
The small red pearl appearing for the first time before the sight of most of those present naturally surprised each of them, however, what happened next undoubtedly marked the beginning of what before the end of the day would be a memory that would never die and would forever remain eternal in the minds of all those present. Blood arrows. His voice crushed the creaking sound of both metal doors and in response to his words, the small red pearl immediately released a powerful radiance, tinging the surroundings with its crimson light. The two giant doors had barely opened halfway when the wind hissed and in an instant over a hundred dark red arrows glowed, tracing their paths directly into the building and breaking the wind that obstructed them. Bang, 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 bang. The several demonic eyes that had been illuminated amidst the darkness that engulfed even the sunlight were extinguished as in the midst of continuous explosions their heads were blown off by the arrows of blood. Their bodies fell to the ground noisily and even before they could take a step out of the pagoda they were destroyed with no possibility of return. The red demonic eyes disappeared and apart from the sound of the pagoda doors opening the only sound that could be heard was the remaining echo of the falling bodies of what were probably more mechanical golems. This. What happened? The leader. He. But. Why? The abrupt change in the situation naturally left everyone present dumbfounded. Some of them even almost let their weapons slip and their nerves began to go back without them even realizing it. They were all expecting to face more terrifying enemies than before, but even before one of them could take a step out of the pagoda, they were all turned into metal scrap. There were few people who immediately understood Bai Zemin's thoughts. Shang Guanbing Shui, Qin He, Wu Yijuan, Kai Jingyi, Zhong De, and Nan Gong Lingxin. The six of them were tense waiting for the next words of the man in front of them all as those words would mark a new beginning for all of them. Update faster perks. Google search pan.deno.vel, remember to remove punctuation. By Zemin took a deep breath, and after a few seconds, his voice spread throughout the square. First order. His words were like the arrival of the sun after what seemed like an eternity of rain and lightning. To those people who understood the reason why Baizemin had immediately attacked without allowing the enemies to leave and without caring if they lost training subjects for both himself and the troops. Behind him, the two words first order were like a powerful breeze of warm wind blowing away the dark clouds that overshadowed the skies. Shang Guanbing Shui and the other five let out sighs of relief before their eyes blazed with fiery excitement. It was only then that everyone else understood what was going on. The first pagoda was protected by unclassified mechanical golems while all the mechanical golems in the second pagoda were first-order golems. Therefore, although it might sound crazy to many, by Zemin and a few others were worried that the third pagoda might be guarded by second-order mechanical golems. Even by Zemin would have to be careful if he faced tens of thousands of enemies with the strength of second-order existences not to mention the others present. The entire party would probably face annexation if even the slightest slip-up happened. Fortunately, that did not seem to be the case. Flash, 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 flash. Not more than a few seconds passed when more than five times the number of glowing eyes compared to the previous number flashed inside the pagoda as the two giant doors finally slammed hard against the two walls behind them. Bang! The sound of the explosion generated by the collision between the two doors and the pagoda walls was like the resounding sound of the war horn announcing the imminent confrontation between two armies. Just as before, silver-skinned, red-eyed mechanical golems armed with swords, spears, maces, shields, chains, and shining deep black armor, came out from inside the pagoda with amazing agility and in moments arrived in front of Baizemin, who greeted them with an indifferent smile on his face. He drew annihilation of the falling sky in the form of a normal sword and with a wave of his right hand the wind was cut off by a flash of golden light that spread out in front of Baizemin in the form of an arc. Swoosh! The 70% of the mechanical golems were cut off from the waist down and the lower parts continued to advance a couple of steps before falling down, as well as the upper part. As for the remaining 30%, some of them charged in the direction of Baizemin while others focused their red eyes on the back where the group of soul evolvers and soldier shooters was waiting for their share of the pie. However, unfortunately for the soul evolvers, they didn't get to taste too much of the pie this time. Fire! Sun Ling pointed her dagger forward and in an instant around 200 light blue beams burst beyond where she was standing. Not even a second after the bright beams shot out from the electromagnetic rifles under the accurate fire of military trained soldiers when over 80% of the mechanical golems charging at them were turned into a pile of scrap metal, several of them were even hit by more than three energy beams before falling to the ground never to rise again. Woo! These electromagnetic rifles sure are something else. Ha 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 ha! This senior just killed a first order golem with his own hands. Cool. Awesome. Now even we can defend ourselves against first order creatures. 
As long as we have these weapons, we don't need to fear. Crush them all. Don't let the team leader and the others do all the work. The power of the electromagnetic rifles naturally amazed everyone but mainly delighted the soldiers who without evolving felt like they were falling behind. Now they too had the power to help their comrades and defend their loved ones. Update faster perks? Google search pan.deno.vel, remember to remove punctuation. The soul evolvers were shocked to the marrow of their bones as they saw the terrifying power of their human race's newly acquired weapon and shuddered in terror as they realized that had it not been. For Shangguan Bing Shua and Nan Gong Lingxin's powerful defensive barriers, they would have all lost their lives hours ago and wouldn't even have known how they died. Interesting. Feng Hong roared and over 50 fireballs floated above his head as he shouted loudly, brothers and sisters, let's not let the army take too much prey or we will become the biggest joke in the entire base. At the same time as Feng Hong's words made the soul evolver's blood boil and raised their competitive spirits, he proved that it was not for nothing that he was the man leading the Phoenix Guild which was composed of the mages with the highest and most frightening attack power in the entire Chinese Renaissance faction. Meteor rain. Bang. 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 The 50 fireballs were only the prelude to the real attack because when Feng Hong's words fell hundreds of magic circles appeared in the sky and from them fist-sized fireballs began to rain down. Each fireball despite its size was definitely powerful as even the rank 1 armor covering the metal body of the golems was incinerated in no time and the mechanical golems had not taken more than a few steps before turning into a pool of thick silver-colored liquid. In just 5 seconds, over 3,000 mechanical golems whose power was comparable to that of first-order soul evolvers were turned into useless scrap and even the armor and weapons disappeared from everyone's sight. Good skill. By Zemin couldn't help but praise aloud. He had stopped holding back the mechanical golems upon seeing how relaxed the soul evolvers were with the help of the shooters armed with electromagnetic rifles so he naturally glimpsed Feng Hong's attack. Although the name Meteor Rain was too much for a skill that only generated fist-sized fireballs, Bai Zemin believed that if Feng Hong continued his growth he would one day be able to bring his skill to the stage of doing justice to its name. One should not forget that Feng Hong, despite being level 50, had not yet broken into the second order. He had just in a sense slaughtered over 3,000 existences within his own order of power. Now Bai Zemin finally understood where Feng Tianwu's talent came from, it looked like her father was actually a natural talent for fire-type magic. With the trained soldiers now wielding deadly long-range weapons capable of crushing first-order existences if they hit the right place and with the soul evolvers not willing to be left behind and thus giving 200% of themselves, the first wave of mechanical golems was soon overwhelmed. Not even 10 minutes passed before more than 20,000 First Order Golems fell to the ground. Most surprising of all was that in fact, Bai Zemin and Shangguan Bing Shui barely intervened during the entire confrontation, providing support as the mechanical golems began to come out at twice the speed as before and slowly overwhelmed the human group. However, the second wave was not as easy as the first one. Swoosh! Amidst hundreds of melee mechanical golems, a flash of blue-colored energy broke past the allied lines composed of golems and in an instant closed the slightly more than 200 meters between the inside of the pagoda and the human group. The face of Zhong De changed slightly when he realized that the attack was directed in his direction and that his relatively low agility did not let him move out of the way in time. Fortunately, Bai Zemin had already warned someone earlier that there would definitely be some change in the third pagoda compared to the second one. Energy Barrier X5. Nan Gonglingxin, who had been attentive at all times and had reacted as soon as she noticed the flash of light inside the pagoda, gritted her teeth and activated her skill for which Bai Zemin held her in such high esteem. She took no risks and activated her skill to the maximum possible just in case. When the blue energy beam met the multicolored energy barrier, there was no explosion or strange bangs, instead, what happened was a clash between two equal types of energy with one trying to devour the other. This was the first time Nangong Lingxin had shielded an electromagnetic rifle attack by herself without Shangguan Bingxue's help. However, Nangong Lingxin didn't feel like seeing if her skill which was now a second order level 4 skill was more powerful than the enemy energy beam so she immediately activated another one of her most powerful skills. Reflect. Swoosh. The energy beam suddenly seemed to be affected by a pair of invisible hands as without warning it spun in a U-shape and in an instant disappeared in the direction of the pagoda's interior. Everyone who was paying attention noticed that beyond the open doors, a pair of glowing red eyes went out as the energy beam disappeared into the darkness. First Order Shooter Nan Gong Lingxin shouted loudly to be heard by Bai Zemin, 
who was more than 200 meters away even amidst the constant explosions and shouts in the heat of battle. The enemy has shooters. Sun Ling quickly took Bai Zemin's place as he had instructed her earlier. Soul Evolvers with rank 1 shields and mages capable of erecting defensive barriers, protect the team of shooters and mages of attack. The human troops seemed disorganized for a moment as everyone tried to adapt to the slight change in the formation and the sudden activation of dozens of skills that altered the flow of mana around. Them.Update faster perks? Google search pan.deno.vel, remember to remove punctuation. Fortunately, with Shang Guan Bing Shua and Nan Gong Lingxin present, as well as the constant attacks from Chin He and the other shooters, the group managed to have time to adapt to the changes even under the constant storm of energy beams falling over them from inside the pagoda. As for the reason why Bai Zemin had not intervened yet. Right in front of him, a mechanical golem completely different from all the other golems they had faced so far advanced step by step from the darkness of the pagoda. Furthermore, this golem immediately focused its eyes on him as if it knew who its real enemy was this time. I was saying it couldn't be that easy. Bai Zemin scoffed and instead of waiting for his enemy, he charged forward, turning into a whirlwind of swift wind. Chapter 659 Birth of the Eternal Bitterness Seed Despite being over 3 meters tall and despite its body being encased in heavy golden-colored armor that was big enough for its giant self to move with ease, as well as carry a claymore-like blade in its hands, the speed of the mechanical golem was indisputable and among all the mechanical golems by Zemin had seen so far, it was the highest by far. With the terrifyingly high agility of Bai Zemin and the abnormally high agility of the golden golem, the distance between the two closed in a mere blink of time. Bai Zemin stopped abruptly as he arrived in front of the golden golem and with a casual swing annihilation of the falling sky turned into a flash of golden light targeting the robotic creature's head. However, the golden golem did not stand there waiting for the sword of Bai Zemin as it took advantage of the momentum of its rush and the weight of its body to slash fiercely with its claymore. Downwards. Everything happened in an instant and before 99.99% of those present could react two golden flashes of light met in midair. Boom! A thunderous explosion that sent dozens of first-order mechanical golems near the impact site flying and broke all other sounds of the ongoing war between humans and golems echoed throughout the square and even into the nearby forests. The humans wanted to stop for a moment to see what was happening on the front side. But the golems were just machines with the sole purpose of wiping out the invading resistance so they continued to charge and launch into the offensive, leaving no room for the soul evolvers and shooter soldiers to relax even for a second. In fact, that small opening that was generated when several golems were sent flying was immediately closed as twice as many golems appeared in that area, covering the hole that the other golems had left. Amidst the beams of energy flying everywhere, going from the outside to the inside of the pagoda and vice versa, as well as the constant melee battles that were breaking out non-stop between humans and golems. Shang Guan Bing Shui was the only one who even with all the tasks she was carrying out at the same time managed to notice that at the front appeared an enemy with the ability to annihilate this group, were it not for a couple of anomalies present. Bai Zemin's black eyes were indifferent as his gaze met head-on with the demonic red eyes of the golden golem whose height towered above his own. Second Order Bai Zemin muttered under his breath as his right hand remained tightly clenched around the hilt of the golden soul armament. On the other hand, the giant golden golem was trying to press its claymore down at all times as its stern face devoid of the emotions characteristic of a living being focused on the human in front of it with the sole intention of crushing him. Unfortunately, Bai Zemin's arm was as firm as Mount Tai while the two arms of the giant golden golem trembled and creaked trying to use strength and weight to defeat what seemingly could not be defeated. The golden mechanical golem was undoubtedly powerful, its strength and agility made it an existence capable of annihilating large-sized factions, let alone a small group of several hundred. However, the person it was facing was not someone it could stop. The body of Baizemin swayed slightly and in an instant, he appeared just above the head of the golden golem. The giant clearly had more than strength and agility as its reflexes were remarkable. Unfortunately, when the golden golem raised its weapon behind its body to block the incoming attack, its claymore was found blocking nothing but empty, powerless air before its body was sent flying like a kite whose kite had been cut off. Boom! The explosion of the giant golem's body carelessly slamming against the front wall of the third pagoda rumbled noisily, and had it not been for the square and the buildings above it being protected by an especially powerful magic circle, the destruction would definitely not have been small. Bai Zemin watched as the golden golem slowly stood up and a flash of bitterness shone in his black eyes. Although the attack power of annihilation of the falling sky cannot be underestimated, its sword form is not sharp enough to cut through this golem's body. He sighed before imagining the form of a giant golden sword. 
To change the form of annihilation of the falling sky the wielder needed to have a clear image of the weapon they wanted said sole armament to change into. But for Byzemin who had hammered long enough to at least understand the composition and shape of most melee weapons, such a thing was not difficult at all. A second was all it took for annihilation of the falling sky to release a deep golden radiance, and by the time that golden radiance vanished, in the hands of Byzemin was a giant sword as tall as his body. Furthermore, if one were to look closer, one would notice that except for the color and the dull red runes the shape of the weapon was exactly the same as Crimson Thunder, Dragon's last words. Bang! The golden golem lunged forward after leaping back to its feet. Its resolve did not waver as a living being probably would have and its only goal was still to crush the biggest impediment before it. Even the deep cut that had almost severed its body into two halves was not enough to stop it in any way. However, Byzemin was no longer in the mood to play with the golden golem. Byzemin tightened his grip on the large wielder of the golden greatsword and his left foot moved forward at the same time as he brought both arms behind his body together with the weapon. Then, just as the golden golem stopped in front of him and raised its claymore high, Byzemin growled under his breath before propelling his entire body forward making use of his left foot at the same time as the muscles in his arms swelled and he slashed fiercely diagonally. If my weapon is not sharp enough then I just have to turn you into a pile of scrap metal using brute force. Annihilation of the falling sky in the form of a greatsword turned into a huge bright golden arc that shimmered the surroundings, and long before the golden golem could slash with its claymore downwards, its chest was firmly struck by Byzemin's attack. Boom! The shockwave resulting from the thunderous explosion that left several of the soul evolvers behind Byzemin in deafness not only sent thousands of first-order golems flying but the bodies of those. Golems were torn to pieces when the air pressure engulfed them. In fact, had Byzemin not taken the shockwave by himself, most of the people behind him would have disappeared from the face of the earth as a little over 200 meters distance was nothing to second. Order Powerhouses The body of the golden golem froze but this only lasted a second before any resistance Byzemin felt disappeared. The great golden sword in his hand slashed beyond the empty space in front of him at the same time as different pieces of the body of the giant golem were sent flying messily all over the place. Even the big golden armor that had clearly been forged from some kind of high-quality metal gained several cracks on the surface. It was clear that the durability had dropped tremendously due to the previous attack. All the mechanical golems that were coming out of the pagoda were also destroyed by the cutting shockwave and the sound of their metal parts hitting the ground after raining down from the sky echoed everywhere. With no more golems coming out of the pagoda, the remaining ones were soon wiped out and it took no more than a few minutes to finish off the shooter-type golems hiding in the dark cloak inside the pagoda. By the time all the golems were defeated, the group of soul evolvers and shooter soldiers did not cheer as they did during the previous two cases. Instead, they all gawked at the back of the person standing a couple of hundred meters in front of them. Standing among mountains of shattered metal pieces, mostly destroyed weapons and armor, Byzemin was looking at the third pagoda with annihilation of the falling sky in its great sword form resting comfortably on his right shoulder while only his right hand clutched onto the long hilt. After several seconds and realizing that no more golems would really come out to attack them, Byzemin slowly turned around and said in a calm but deep voice, Everyone, good job. You have performed brilliantly during this raid. Also, let me tell you that when we return to base, I will reward each of you in a way that does justice to the bravery and talent you have shown during this expedition. However, Byzemin did not receive the enthusiasm he expected to receive after he said such words. Instead, Sun Ling looked at him with hesitant eyes and after glancing sideways at the giant armor that had been sent flying to the other side of the square asked in a low voice, This, by Dash. Team leader, can I ask you a question? What is it? Byzemin nodded indifferently. That. That golden armored golem. Sun Ling swallowed silently before asking in astonishment. Wasn't it a golem with the strength of a second order existence? Indeed. Byzemin confirmed before frowning and saying somewhat confused, however, what's the matter with that? What's the matter with that? Everyone exchanged glances and became slack-jawed after hearing the person leading them speaking so casually despite having crushed a golem comparable to a second order existence. The most powerful person in the entire Chinese Renaissance, Wu Keqian, was a second-order existence for goodness sake. Even Wu Keqian would definitely not be able to take down a second-order enemy in such a short time and it was still debatable whether he would be able to defeat the golden mechanical golem or not. Looking at Sun Ling and everyone else who was speechless, Shang Guan Bing Shui approached by Zemin with a look brimming with hidden bitterness and said in a low voice, Lord Team Leader. I think you are forgetting that this is the first time most of the people here have seen you fight against a second-order existence. 
At first, Bai Zemin was surprised after hearing Shang Guanbing Shui's whisper. However, he soon understood what she meant so he could not help but smile bitterly and shook his head. Of course, what else did he expect to happen? What Bai Zemin had just done was to crush a being who would probably be able to contend without any problems against the strongest person in the entire Chinese Renaissance faction. Even if Bai Zemin had already made it clear to them that he could not be measured by common sense, seeing a second-order existence being shattered so easily in less than a minute was not something that could be easily accepted by their minds. Unfortunately, there was not much Bai Zemin could do in this case. Seeing Bai Zemin and Shang Guan Bing Shui chatting with complicated expressions on their faces, Feng Tianwu could not help but smile with bitterness. She had seen the performance of the young man whom she had once rejected in the cruelest way possible, and not only had he become stunningly handsome, he had also become the leader of a faction of tens of thousands built by himself and would soon become the absolute leader of the entire Chinese Renaissance faction. Now, she also found that Bai Zemin's ability not only allowed him to wipe out millions of unclassified mutant ants in moments, but that he was also powerful enough to make the second order existences. She feared to turn into nothing more than toys in his hands. Until this moment, although Feng Tianwu greatly regretted for doing what she did in the past and had truly apologized from the bottom of her heart to Bai Zemin, she did not feel anything other than regret for knowing that she had done something wrong that no one with a human conscience should ever do. However, slowly within her heart, another kind of regret began to develop. The regret that people felt after realizing what they had lost for a moment of stupidity or for not having opened their eyes properly at the right moment. It was just that Feng Tianwu herself had not yet noticed it and, unfortunately for her, when she did notice it she would also realize that the mistake she had made during her youth would cost her an eternity of bitterness. Chapter 660 Lilith's Lies and Shang Guan Bing Shui's Vow During the assault on the Third Pagoda, there were practically no casualties compared to the other two assaults since although the number of enemies had been undoubtedly higher in this third assault, the power of the electromagnetic rifles proved their worth in the hands of soldiers who had received military training for years and who had been shooting firearms to the point in which it was so normal for them as it was for them to breathe. With the support of nearly 200 human elites whose ability to get headshots at a distance of 200 meters was over 70%. The soul evolvers lost a lot of weight that was previously carried on their shoulders like an immovable rock. Leaving some words behind, Bai Zemin walked into the third pagoda together with a small group of people. Having experienced the same feeling four times, Bai Zemin and those who had accompanied him during the teleports back and forth between each tower did not feel uncomfortable after their bodies were moved through space until they reached a room hidden who knows how many meters below the ground where the large circular stone square had been built. This time, the room they had been teleported to was actually a huge library whose size was actually comparable to the International Library by at least two or three times. The smell of dust and old books filled the air and as the group walked with careful steps they couldn't help but notice that the brown woodwork now covered in a thick layer of dust after not having been maintained for so long creaked as if it would split at any moment. By Zemin stopped in front of the first bookshelf that was probably holding at least a hundred books as thick as a small 500-page encyclopedia. He casually picked up a book that was clearly different from most books that existed in the world today. The cover of the book was actually the leather of some mutant animal as even now the light protective mana surrounding it could be felt flowing through by Zemin's palms. Probably due to that light layer of protective mana, the book didn't even have a moat of dust on it and when by Zemin opened it, thick sheets of yellowish paper greeted him. The first sheet had a few words written on it and fortunately, the language was Mandarin Chinese so Bai Zemin had no trouble reading it straight out loud. 100 Ways to Improve the Quality of the Earth Unique Specimen? Bai Zemin frowned slightly at the words that were probably a base summary of the contents of the entire book and out of pure curiosity turned to the second page. It was during the 273rd year of the Sage Calendar when our ground changed from normal to mutant ground. When our human race finally managed to get half a foot firmly on safe field and our sages began to study the earth, they realized that they could now plant the same plants as in the past but what they would get in return would be greater quantities and in qualities never seen before. Over the years, several ways were found to improve the quality of the soil to make the most of the world we live in, one of them being. The more by Zemin read, the more he was amazed to the point that he lost himself in the middle of the heavy book in his hands and forgot that behind him, there were people waiting for his next orders. Year 273 of the Sage Calendar? But what the hell was that calendar? Bai Zemin had never in his entire life heard of such a thing so at first he couldn't even help but think that the book in his hands was a piece of trash written by someone boring even though deep in his heart he knew that such was not the case after witnessing the previous two ancient ruins. 
However, the more he read the more he realized how logical the words written in the book were, and the more he was amazed at the wonderful benefits that the corpses of any evolved creature could offer to the world, and in return, the world would respond by giving you resources that many could only dream of. Furthermore, Baizemin realized that while there were several ways to get benefits from the ground they walked on daily, in reality, those ways had to be applied in order and had to meet certain special patterns, if a single step was completed before or after or if it was simply ignored, then the process would end up failing. In short, the book in his hands was undoubtedly an incredibly valuable treasure for mankind in the long run. Baizemin immediately ordered everyone to start putting the books into storage. He didn't care what these books were about and all he knew was that if one book he picked up by coincidence was already so valuable then the other books inside this library would definitely have great uses at some point. He was not going to leave any of them behind. Of course, Shangguan Bingxue had to build another ice wagon. Seriously, I feel like I've reduced to a cargo character. Shangguan Bingxue sighed as she stretched her hands skyward to free herself from the sluggishness without realizing that in the process the curves of her delightful body highlighted even more than they already were. Don't complain, I'll pet you on the head later. Bai Zemin said casually as he watched the others work from the second floor. In fact, with Wu Yijuan taking the helm, Bai Zemin didn't need to worry about anything as she was far more effective than him when it came to this kind of job. You think everything in this world can be solved with a pat? Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at him feeling a bit speechless. I am not Luo Ning, nor am I Xiang Feng or the One Sisters. Bai Zemin looked at her with weird eyes and a thought flashed in his mind, but he decided to keep it to himself to avoid awkward situations. Besides, he now had a relationship with Lilith so he didn't see it right to say words that could be misunderstood. Team leader, you have to see this. It was just at that moment when a soldier with an electromagnetic rifle slung over his right shoulder called out to him from the deepest part of the second floor. Sure, I'll be right there. Bai Zemin shouted looking back over his shoulder and seeing the man waving his hand to ask him to go quickly. Bai Zemin nodded towards Shangguan Bing Shui before disappearing past the various wooden shelves. Shelves which after a bit of searching they found out were not only there to store books but also separated by content and usefulness so it was a lot easier to sort them into level of importance. Swoosh! Shangguan Bing Shui was about to go downstairs to help Wei Juan when a rose-scented breeze caused her to stop in her tracks. Looking back, she saw the only woman who could make her admit defeat in terms of appearance and strength no matter how unwilling Shangguan Bing Shui was to do so. She immediately frowned when she saw the smile on the lips of Lilith. For some reason, those ruby eyes looked especially bright now and Shangguan Bing Shui didn't like the mocking glance Lilith was giving her at the present moment. What do you want? She asked clearly without much goodwill. No. Well, I actually wanted to make peace with you. Lilith said with a faint smile and her eyes flashed weirdly as she saw the surprise in Shangguan Bing Shui's eyes. Did you perhaps bang your head against one of the pagodas? Hee <laughs> hee. Although these pagodas are in fact tough, they can only handle at most one attack from a fourth order existence. Lilith chuckled at Shangguan Bing Shui's words. She ignored her frown and continued, The reason I want to make peace with you is because I actually realized that what I was thinking before doesn't even have a point. Do you want to read more chapters? Come to. Shangguan Bing Shui for some reason felt a bit uncomfortable at the weird behavior of the woman in front of her and even more so at her last words. She frowned harder than before and asked in a low voice, what are you supposed to mean by those words? Lilith sighed and while playing with her hair she answered calmly and in a slow voice, to be honest with you, your beauty, as well as your talent and willpower, shocked me from the very first moment I saw you. Do you want to read more chapters? Come to for a second order lower existence, your beauty is comparable to beautiful fourth order women, which apart from me probably only Uriel of the army of heaven could achieve. Oh, just in case but Uriel was considered the most beautiful woman in the history of the universe until recently. I tell you this to help you to understand and show how prideful you can be. While Lilith did not give many details, Shangguan Bing Shui was not stupid and naturally understood that the reason why the woman called Uriel was no longer the most beautiful woman in the history of the universe was probably due to the appearance of Lilith herself. It was just that Shangguan Bing Shui didn't care about anything she was talking about. Beauty or not, she never cared about such things more than what was essentially necessary and in fact, her beauty had often been a source of problems. Lilith paused and seeing the disinterest in the stare of the woman in front of her, she chuckled before continuing calmly. At first I was just amazed by your talent, beauty, and willpower. However, that was all. The problem started when I slowly began to realize that somewhere along this whole journey, my heart began to be attracted to that little scoundrel. It was then that just like any woman I began to feel a hint of jealousy, 
And as I realized that you were gradually becoming an existence capable of walking alongside him, while I could only watch from the sidelines, I began to get worried. So, you're telling me that your rivalry against me is because you realized your growing affection for Baizemin? Shang Guanbing Shui asked clearly with confusion painted on her face. Yeah, Lila sighed before smiling slightly and then saying, however, I recently realized that there was no need for me to feel any pressure from you. It's just silly. Although Lilith seemed to come with good intentions, for some reason Shang Guan Bing Shui could not understand why she felt increasingly annoyed with the woman in front of her now. Regardless of what Shang Guan Bing Shui might be thinking, Lilith continued, Your goals are completely different from mine. But even if we put everything aside, Bai Zeman and I officially entered into a man and woman relationship recently so after calming down and putting my emotions in order, I realized that there was no point in feeling on guard against you. What? Shang Guan Bing Shui's pupils trembled for a split second and her eyes widened in shock before her expression returned to normal. Lilith's eyes glistened and no one knew what she was thinking as she said with a chuckle, well, things just happened. Anyway, now that the heart of the man I love is mine, there's no need for me to worry about nonsense. And thanks to that, I realized that there was never really a need for you and me to get along badly. After saying those words, Lilith didn't seem to notice the ugly expression on Shang Guan Bing Shui's face and extended her flawless free hand forward. How about we make peace? Shang Guan Bing Shui stared at the hand in front of her and her cold expression made it difficult for people to know how she felt or what her thoughts were. After what seemed like several minutes of silence, however, Shang Guan Bing Shui raised her head without taking Lilith's hand and as she looked at those bright ruby eyes, her own blue eyes sparkled as she said in a calm but clear voice, I hate you. Lilith looked genuinely surprised as she blinked at her and asked in a low voice, You hate me? Shang Guan Bing Shui looked at her fearlessly and said in a clear voice, I hate that you treat people's hearts like toys. Do you think love is about winning or losing? You think people's hearts can be won and that's all? I don't know how you, higher existences, do anything, but let me tell you that your thoughts will get you nowhere in your relationship with him. In fact, you're more likely to make him suffer more than the happiness you can bring him. Oh? Lilith looked into her eyes for several seconds before the smile on her lips slowly grew. She gracefully retracted her hand and said with an amused smile on her face, Can you make him any happier than I can? I don't think it's possible for someone who doesn't even know what she wants from herself, right? Shang Guan Bing Shui shook her head and said under her breath, I don't know if I could make him happy or not. Bai Zeman is a man who deserves the best in the world, and I don't think I am the person who can give it to him. But regardless of everything else, at the very least, I think I can make him happier than you. A woman who only minds victory and defeat will only end up hurting his heart for a second time. Everything in this world is about victory and defeat, Lilith replied indifferently. Win or be defeated, kill or be killed, life or death. It all comes down to who comes out on top regardless of the confrontation. But of course, a person like you who at least so far has never lost anything in her life would never understand these words. I only hope that by the time you realize this it won't be too late for you. This conversation has no meaning whatsoever anymore. Shang Guan Bing Shui shook her head and turned to leave. However, she stopped as she was about to walk down the stairs. Did you forget something? Lilith taunted. Shang Guan Bing Shui did not snort at her words. Instead, she didn't turn to look at her but said in a chilling voice, I don't know why you showed up to bother me, but let me give you a warning. If you hurt him, I, Shang Guan Bing Shui, will personally rip out your heart and will feed it to the dogs. No matter where you run, I will definitely find you and show you the meaning of the word regret. Ignore my words if you want, but then don't complain later that I didn't warn you. It is not a threat, it is a vow. Without waiting for Lilith's reply, Shang Guan Bing Shui calmly walked down the stairs before walking toward Wu Yijuan, and after exchanging a few words, she began to help her with the organization of everything. Lilith watched Shang Guan Bing Shui's back for several seconds before the mocking look on her face and the disdainful smile at the corner of her lips receded. Instead, her eyes became softer and the smile on her face became more natural. So scary. Hee <laughs> hee. In fact, 90% of everything Lilith had said before were pure lies. Her attitude was also fake. There was no way she could see by Zeman as an armor that could be won in a fight and taken casually. It was just that she needed to have this conversation with Shang Guan Bing Shui. After all, Lilith also had plans for Shang Guan Bing Shui when she arrived on Earth. It was just that those plans might have to change depending on many factors. The future was definitely uncertain for the most part. However, Lilith knew many things that unless huge changes happened such as by Zeman's even more terrifying talent compared to what Lilith expected, those things would happen and surely no one would be happy with them. 
As she watched Shang Guan Bing Shui giving orders with an indifferent expression, Lilith sighed and muttered under her breath, Little princess, at this rate, you'll never be able to break through the fourth order. This means that even if Bai Zemin becomes a higher existence, you will never be able to follow him. Those words floated for a long time in the atmosphere and seemed to have been muttered by no one as there was no person in sight. 